Wasso, wasso, wasso. What's up, everybody? Literally hear my tea go off right now. Crank down the spoofy. How we doing, folks? What's good? What's up? How are things? Happy Monday. How's everybody's Monday treating them? Hope it's good. Yeah, as I told Bats, I very nearly missed stream today. I was, I was this close. Gonna be late. Another day in paradise, says Sneaky. That's right. I, uh, I've officially discerned my favorite tea of the D&D teas that you guys sent me. Officially discerned the best one is unsurprisingly, given my, given my uh, profession, the divine tea. The art of the divination tea is absolutely tops. I'm a sucker for lemongrass, you guys. I am just, I'm a sucker for lemongrass. I can't help myself. It's so good. I don't know what it is about it that I love so much, but I do. I'm gonna go drop over in general that we're live. We are live. Um, come watch the Crossfire News and play some Pocket Man. Get in here. Nice. But yeah, I hope everybody's well. I hope everyone had a great weekend. We had a great weekend here at Checkpoint. We had our very, very exciting um, checkathon. Eight hours of fun. We were up until midnight. Hunter fam mom got me to play Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite battle pass. So I'm uh, I'm drinking my my tea out of my Methodist gaming mug in honor of the Fortnite, Fortnite. What voice would go well for Fortnite, huh? None of these really. None of these voices make any sense with Fortnite. Had a great weekend. Went to a training. Had a good All Saints. You know, I thought about what we could do for All Saints. I really thought about doing something. Um, specifically with November 1st because I was like we're going to be streaming and I really thought about doing like some candles and lighting some candles or something but just didn't have the time to prep for it. It's been a crazy couple weeks huh? It's been a crazy couple weeks I don't know about you guys but this is this is my first um, this is my first uh, time change with two kids and um I do recommend the fall time change with two kids because gaining an hour, it's like, it's magic. It's magic. I feel so rejuvenated. Good afternoon, morning, Kuro, Ohio. What's up, my friend? Welcome in, welcome to the chat. It has changed my entire life. Yeah, you don't even have kids and it's just so good. That extra hour, just working. I hear that. You hear that? I hear that. Technically me too. Technically same. Technically hashtag same. Right there with you. I don't remember when I got my tea. I'm going to say it was at like exactly one. So we're going to go until one. We're going to go until 110 to let this tea brew. How are you? How's chat? I can't respond for chat, but I'm doing great. As I just said, I am, uh, I'm feeling rested and restored and rejuvenated. We had a great weekend. Um, I got a lot of rest. 
get a lot of rest after. Got to see some family. That's always good. But our uh, obviously the highlight of the weekend was the checkathon, which I want to thank everybody that was able to be there. Should give yourself some chats in the clap because we raised our goal. We set our goal for five hundred dollars for the Movember Foundation, and we raised five hundred and twenty nine dollars for Movember by the time everything was done. So not only did we reach our goal, we went over it by just a smidge, and uh, that is incredible. That is awesome. So I want to thank everybody that gave towards that um, foundation and was able to support men's mental health, men's physical health, uh, as well as um, testicular cancer research and prostate cancer research. So huge, huge chats in the clap. Then I spent most of my Saturday, well, not most, I spent a lot of my Saturday watching uh, Crossfire, who were about to tune into their news segment. I watched Crossfire's um, Extra Life charity stream. I don't know where they ended up. Did they shout out on Twitter? Let's see if they said their final number. I don't know if they ever announced their final number. Whenever I hopped off, they had raised $410, I think. Um, and then they were going to double it. So it was already it was already $820 towards Extra Life, which is incredible. Incredible, incredible. Life-changing research and support. Didn't see the final number, but they did reach their goal. They did reach their goal. Wow, dude. They were a long way whenever I left, so that's incredible. Their goal was one grand, so that means they that $2,000 was given to Extra Life. That's humongous. That's incredible. Excellent stuff. I just finished uh, the first volume of Dan to Dan today, uh, as we got that in our last Manga Spice Cafe box, and uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Real weird. Real weird. If you're if you're wanting something very strange, if you're wanting like Bobobo but scary, if you want the horror version of Bobobo, <laughs> which which some people may say Bobobo is already scary enough, but if you want the kind of irreverent humor of Bobobo mixed with the supernatural elements of say Tokyo Ghoul, if you want Tokyo Ghoul meets Bobobo, you got it. Bobo, 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 scary. They hit the 1,000 with the match. Understood, Sneaky. Understood. So they at least got to that 500 mark and maybe a little bit above and beyond. Well, either way, that is excellent news. Excellent news. It was very fun to watch. I hate that I didn't get to see all of the Shadow of Colossus, Shadow of the Colossus gameplay. Uh, it looked really gorgeous. I'd never played the new one. I never played the remake. And uh, it looked just like I remembered, but then also a little better. But I loved, I loved Shadow of the Colossus back in the day. That was a game I spent a lot of time on, my PlayStation 2 era. If I'm going to know a game, uh, it's going to be PS2, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, DS. Um, those were my consoles. Wii, Wii U, Switch now. I play some games on the PS5 now. Honestly, I play more games now than I ever have. But, um, yeah, you get the idea. You get what I'm getting at. Have we reached 100 games yet? I've been playing a bunch of games, you guys. I played um, most recently Ghost Song over on Game Pass. If you haven't checked out Ghost Song, it's a new Metroidvania from Humble. And uh, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, it was kind of, it kind of, it reminded me of, um, it felt like a Metroid meets a Dark Souls in the sense of the challenge very similar level of challenge. Um, but what I was missing is I have very, I have very uh, limited amounts of Metroidvania experience. I've never played really any of the Castlevania games to their finish, but I played, I've played many Metroid games. I've played several Metroid games. I've beaten a couple Metroid games. And um, what, whenever I think of a Metroid game, I think of the Nintendo polish factor. I think of immaculate Nintendo precision timing. I played Hollow Knight. Exact. Another great example. Not a not a Nintendo game, but Hollow Knight also has that same polish. It's just it works. And by the time that you by the time you've unlocked even a couple of the things in Hollow Knight or even a couple of things in Metroid Dread, uh, you feel you feel like you're on fire. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a gamer sense that comes through that you just feel good. Ghost Song didn't have that. And granted, I've only played like two hours of it, so I can't really weigh in like too heavily. But just in the first level or two, I haven't reached the first boss even, so it's still very minimal. Um, but just in the first boss or two, 
the precision is off. The precision is just, for instance, uh, whenever you're scaling up a wall as you do in Metroid, right? You're, you're climbing one block after the next to get up to the top of the area that you've fallen down, right? Very classic. Um, you're too tall. You're too tall and so you miss jumps, but it's not because you didn't go right or left enough, it's because your head hit the block above it. And that's just, it's that kind of, that is the perfect example of what this game did wrong so far for me. Um, it just doesn't feel polished. Don't stop your flow for this message. I was done my flow anyway. Just here for the lurk. All good, Perry. Happy that you're here. Thanks for the lurk, my friend. I was telling everybody earlier that I got, I, I am having some D&D tea. Some D&D tea. And uh, I have determined my favorite flavor is the Art of the Divination. Um, it's the best one there. They're all good. All of them are excellent. I'm surprised I didn't like the Roybus the most because of, it's just been so long since I've had a good Roybus. But the the uh, Art of Divination was, is my favorite so far. Hollow Knight nailed, pun intended. <laughs> Progression and skill gates. Uh, you learned to be good because the skill gates trained you to be better. I agree. I agree. Hollow Knight uh, compared to... No, not even compared to. One thing that I'm not good at in um, Metroidvanias in general, and this goes with Hollow Knight as well, is I get very lost. Um, and so Hollow Knight, for instance, I still have yet to beat because I'm lost currently. And every single time I log in, I feel like I spend 30 to 45 minutes remembering where I'm at. And then by the time I remember where I'm at, I'm kind of burnt out. And I'm like, well, I don't even feel like playing anymore. So I know that they do tell you vaguely sometimes where to go, depending on where you are in the game and depending on what parts you're, you're doing, what you have unlocked and stuff. But it's definitely not, I get, I get lost. I just don't have time for those games, I guess. Or the patience or the attention span, <laughs> one of the things. Metroid Dread did it really well. I don't know how they kept my attention, but they did. It has to be your one game for a minute. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. All right. The tea should be done. I have Dread, you just need to play it. I really enjoyed Dread. Um, was it a perfect game? No. Now Ori, Ori is one that's been on my backlog perpetually. I've watched that game play, but I've never played it for myself. Ori was just like Shovel Knight, which I have played Shovel Knight at this point. But Ori was just like Shovel Knight in the sense that whenever I was watching streamers was whenever it came out. And so I started, I, I watched a bunch of Shovel Knight and I watched a bunch of Ori. All right, the tea is... It smells fantastic. Cheers, folks. Delicious. Delicious, delicious. I don't know the blessing for tea. I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if it's still like, or if it's uh, it's a bit different for tea, for tea time. I don't know if they have tea time in Japan, to be honest. I got no clue. So yeah, Ghost Song is a game I've been playing recently. Pretty good. Uh, I would say if you can play it for free, you should. Uh, if you have Humble or if you have Game Pass, then you should play um, Ghost Song. Especially if you like Hollow Knight and Metroidvania. I think it's interesting enough. And if you're able to hold the attention, I think it's got a good story, a great aesthetic, uh, and hopefully you're better at it than I am and will enjoy it more. Will I continue with it? Maybe. Maybe. I've also been playing Citizen Sleeper. I officially, you guys, do you know how rare it is that I 100% a game? Very. I couldn't even tell you the most recent time I've 100%ed a game, but I 100% at Citizen Sleeper. I finished all of the storylines purely because of the fact that I just I just needed more story. Like, as soon as I would finish an ending and it would roll credits, I would skip through the credits because I'd be like, I need more story. I, I, I can't let this writing style be gone from me. I enjoy the storytelling methodology of Citizen Sleeper so much. Uh, I've also decided to close the book on Superliminal. <laughs> Uh, we played that on stream during the checkathon for an hour. You guys, I am not exaggerating whenever I say I really, I genuinely was worried for a minute. I was like, could I pull up somebody else's stream for like 30 minutes so that I can go vomit in the toilet? <laughs> that's a little blue and disgusting, but that's how I felt. I felt so gross. 
pretty much the rest of the night. So if you guys were on the stream and you noticed that I felt a little different from super liminal until midnight, it's because I was so worried that I was about to just upchuck. It was, I don't know what it was about that game. I've never had a game do that to me. I've played VR games for hours. I've done tons of games with tons of different things. Something about super liminal and the experience it was doing was just like, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Quick question, what was your NaNoWriMo project about? It's a game right. That is correct. It is uh, Danganronpa, but instead of instead of humans, it is with, uh, with, with basically Digimon. Um, there's more to it than that, but that's the basic gist. It's a visual novel slash uh, first-person investigation game. And so I'm taking the time with NaNoWriMo to write the script, uh, as well as a brief summary of kind of each puzzle. So the puzzles themselves are not built by any means. I know where things are going to go and what you're going to have to explore to get where. And I know the mechanics that you're going to have to use to get there. But I'm really taking NaNoWriMo to just write out the actual dialogue because it's going to be so much. Um, I did some research on like how much to expect. And I found that like the first, the first Danganronpa, I can't remember how long it was, but by the time they got to V3, it was like something like a million words. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I decided on a fantasy horror, more psychological and atmospheric rather than gore and disturbing stuff. I love that. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm always here for psycho over gore. I think it's so much more compelling to watch a character break, break down mentally than to watch them break down literally. Unless that character is uh, spoiler alert for a old movie and comic book series, but unless that is Rorschach exploding into little bits by Dr. Manhattan. That's pretty much the only instance where, I want, where I'm compelled by a character breaking into little bits, physically. I'm not a big fan of gore, any other case. Let me know if you need a programmer. Hey, Kuro, uh, I would love that. I would love to talk to you about that whenever we get into the, um, the actual like planning phase of that kind of stuff. But let me also put a bug in your ear for Ludo Good. If you haven't been uh, curious about Ludo Good yet, uh, Checkpoint does have our own game development arm, and this is separate from this project that I'm working on. But we are in the midst of working on a game and developing our second game. Uh, it's going to be much more labor intensive than our first. If you never played Not Another Advent Story, um, that was a that was a visual novel that we created last year for Advent and released over the course of four weeks. Uh, and that was our debut game. And we have since been working on another game that will we'll see when it launches, <laughs> but we are working on it. Um, and so if you would be interested in learning more about that, be sure to let us know over on the discord. I think there's a section for it. Um, or you can let me know right now and I can write it down and add you to the little good squad. Um, but yeah, we would love to, we would love to have a, um, we would love to have somebody that is, uh, gifted in, in programming language and coding. Um, because currently we have two folks that are very curious about it and want to learn more. Um, but admittedly, it is slower learning by yourself than it is learning with somebody who already knows. And so immersing yourself in that language with somebody that, that you know, at least has some cursory uh, knowledge is going to only improve the experience and improve the final product. Um, so, yeah, I will absolutely send you a link. Do you mean a link to Ludo Good or a link to the game that we made? Because I can send you our game is on Itch.io, not another Advent story. It's actually on the International Game Database, IGDB. So it's technically it's on there. Is it something incredible? Is it going to blow your mind? No. But is it? Was it fun to make? Yeah, it was very fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Totally original OST and game. The artwork is not original. We borrowed from the public domain. But yeah, we've got several of the members of the team right now on stream. Tweed Perry and maybe Thirty Bats and Stained Glass. All right, let's watch. Let's get right into the news. Yeah, Perry is also on this project, and I'm sure would welcome you with open arms to the the um, ludological side of things. And Stain was one of our co-musicians. One of these days, Stain, I would love for you with your rampant amounts of free time, because I know you're just you just have so much free time you can hardly handle it. I would love for you to go back and look at the other pieces of the OST and, and stainify them because your track wound up being one of my favorites of the whole OST. Your 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 loving touches to the music that Bats and I put together was very nice. Yep, 
Yes, let's watch some news. Let's watch some news. We're gonna get in some Crossfire Faith Plus Gaming news today. Um, this is our Monday routine that I'm enjoying quite a lot. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I think it's nice to start the week with some news. And uh, I would encourage you guys to to join us every Monday for this. We'll always do it in the first 30 minutes or so uh, before getting into some Pokemons, uh, even whenever even whenever uh, Scarlet and Violet come out. By the way, is anybody else just staying off the internet? Because I'm just staying off the internet. <laughs> uh, Scarlet and Violet leaks. Scarlet and Violet just announced a new Pokemans, which I did go ahead and drop because I saw him. Gimme Ghoul. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't avoid him. He's everywhere. And so I'm so tired of them spoiling everything. I don't want to know anything else about Scarlet and Violet. I want everything else to be a surprise. And they just refuse. They just refuse. Let's see if anything is already queued. Boink. Good. Thank goodness. You never really know. I try to stick to my weird little corner of the internet. Well, unfortunately, that is my weird little corner of the internet is Pokemans. And so it got spoiled for me. And it just keeps getting spoiled and I needed to stop. I did get stuck down a Capybara um, rabbit hole the other day. I just kept seeing one after another. Uh, let's see. Let me, first and foremost, give myself a little bit of opacity, or a little less opacity. And we'll turn it over to Russ with the news. Hey, Russ. Today on Crossfire... Oh, wait, you're quiet. No, you're not. You're actually, you're actually full volume. Perfect. Hey, Russ. Our news, PSVR 2 pricing and release date revealed. A full John Wick game may be coming at you soon, and... Marvel putting its trust in EA? All coming at you next. I'm very excited about this news, but I'm very concerned about what you just said, 30 bats. Did you see the thing about when the Pope declared capybaras to be fish for Lenten purposes one year? I have never seen that, nor do I know how I feel about it. But all in all, I think I feel bad about it. <laughs> I think I don't want that to be true. I want that to never happen again. Was it a bad pope? Was it was it the was it a was it a pope that was wrong about it? Just realize our charity thing is still up. What's up everybody? I'm Russ Dornish with Crossfire Faith and Gaming, and this is Crossfire News. Let's jump into it. First up, we finally had the full reveal for Sony's PSVR 2. PSVR will release on February 22nd, 2023 for a retail price of $549.99. Pre-orders will open up on November 15th, 2022. That's and soon. there will also be a bundled priced at $599.99 that includes the new Horizon Call of the Mountain launch title. Sony also revealed 11 new Saving titles headed to PSVR 2 in 2023, including the Dark Pictures Switchback VR, Crossfire Sierra Squad, The Light Brigade, Cities VR Enhanced Edition, Cosmonious High, Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue, Jurassic World Aftermath Collection, Pistol Whip VR, Zenith The Last City, After the Fall, and Tentacular. While we don't have a full launch lineup quite yet, Sony did confirm that it is expecting more than 20 titles on the February 22nd launch day. What are your thoughts on PSVR 2? Are you excited or disappointed by the massive price tag? How has your VR experience been thus far, or does VR even interest you at all? Let us know in the comments down below. John Wick has become a... I think VR has plenty of a conversation and you guys are, are welcome to weigh in on it. I have the Oculus too, and I can count on a hand how many times I've used it, like one hand. Um, the price tag is definitely going to scare off a lot of people. I think we're going to see this price price tag continue to plummet. Uh, I think Sony's always a little, a little slow on the trigger there, but they have been the first ones to really do it and do this well. So I'll be very interested. I'll be very interested to see what becomes of the future of this avenue of gaming. Um, 20 games does excite me quite a bit. That's that's pretty impressive. Uh, as far as the games that were announced, none of them excited me too much. Uh, I know that we have a lot of people in here that really like Horizon Zero Dawn. So maybe, maybe, maybe it'll be enough to get people interested uh, and engaged and make it happen. Uh, same, a lot of the VR games I've played are buggy and I get super motion sick. Yeah, I thankfully don't get motion sick, but now that I know that Super Liminal makes me motion sick, maybe I'm just, maybe now I'm old. I'm officially old and I'm going to start getting sick about them, but... Uh, Ace Combat 7 VR, which I really wanted to play, but I'm a PC gamer. 
Yeah. PSVR was a season in my life. It's like I experimented with it in college, but it's just funny stories of my past now. Uh, I call my VR the uh, the Beat Saber machine because that's what I do. If I'm going to play it, I'm going to play Beat Saber, and I'm going to play for about 20 or 30 minutes, and then I'm going to put it down, and then it's going to collect dust, and I'm going to dust it off, and I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to play about 30 minutes of Beat Saber, and then I'm going to put it back down. Um, I don't know. It's just not got the ring yet for me. I don't know if I'm in a place in my life where I have time to play with it, I think is the real the real gist of the matter. Um, I think that if I were a kid again, maybe maybe that would make, make more sense if I just had ample amounts of time in my bedroom where I could put on the VR headset and uh, just, I don't know, find new games to play. Because a lot of the games are free. A lot of the games are pretty cheap. Um, I remember whenever I first got the Oculus, they have a pretty much consistent deal going in the store where you have one game that's pretty considerably marked down every week. So you can get cheap games, you can get them pretty often. And definitely one, definitely one that I've been wanting to do for a while was the Vader one because I always heard people talk about how good the Vader VR you know, thing was, but I just can't be bothered to care, I'm afraid. Uh, we'll see if PSVR does it for me. Um, they're definitely not free on PSVR. Yeah, PlayStation knows how to, how to make a profit, and uh, they're going to. So I'm, I'm interested to see how it affects the, affects the sales and all that sort of stuff, but... I actually haven't heard any responses to the new Oculus Pro if it if it's been selling well or, or poorly. Um, I don't know if we'll get to see those numbers at all, to be honest. But I got to tell you, I like PlayStation already more than Facebook, so it's not really a, a one-to-one situation for me. But time will tell. All right, back to Russ and John Wick. A massive series for Lionsgate Studios. As such, Lionsgate has explored the possibility of a full AAA John Wick game. Lionsgate CEO John Felterheimer mentioned that the company has been discussing proposals for a game, though nothing is set in stone yet. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but we believe there is a big AAA game to be made out of John Wick, Felterheimer said during a call according to a report by IndieWire. We have been fielding proposals. We certainly are interested in moving that forward, but I don't want to say anything more about that at this time. With the massive success of the series, the only video game property that has been released was the John Wick Hex strategy game that currently only holds a 74 on Metacritic. With the movies doing so well and the action-heavy set pieces, one would think a large and expensive gaming adaptation would be a good translation of the source material. Would a John Wick AAA game interest you? Are there any other movie properties that you can think of that would be made into a great video game? Let us know what you think. Lastly, so my problem with the with the John Wick game, uh, first off, I think 74 on a Metacritic is, is pretty doggone good. So I'm going to push back on Russ there. Uh, it is a Bithel game. If you don't keep up with Mike Bithel, um, he is a pretty interesting game dev who has really got his hand in a lot of honeypots right now. Um, and John Wick Hex was pretty good. Uh, definitely has a lot of really good writing to it. Bethel does a really good job of, of writing, and he's got an excellent team over there. If you don't listen to Play, Watch, Listen, then you should. That's where Mike Bethel uh, sits down with Alana Pierce, hmm, Austin Wintry, and uh, what's his name? <laughs> Not Nolan North. Not Nolan North, not Matthew Mercer, but the other very famous nerdy video game voice actor. Um, the most famous of them that for some reason I can't remember their name. Uh, but yeah, it's the, it's the four of them sitting down and talking about things. So, uh, I'll be interested to see if John Wick game happens, but to be quite frank, I think John Wick is just Hitman, And I think the Hitman, Hitman games already do a pretty good job. I don't think we really need it. The, the best part of John Wick is seeing the action stunts in my humble opinion. And, uh, I've already seen what video games can do with action. So unless it's going to be absolutely pressing the boundaries of what an action game can do, uh, I don't see the point of a John Wick game. Don't think it's necessary. Back to the comments that happened in between where uh, maybe 30 Bat says, I'm not all into VR until I have an omnidirectional treadmill and full body tracking. Nah, I'm not doing it until I get like actual tap into my spine. Until it's sorted out online style, I don't, I don't want to be bothered. Until I can, until I can curito my way into the world, it doesn't matter. Speaking of which, yesterday... Yesterday, uh, uh, Sword Art launched officially in the anime. So if you, if you didn't know that fun fact, now you do. Uh, and we are officially in the world of the, of the seed. And thousands of people are about to go into uh, a, coma, a comatose-like state. Uh, yeah, so be, be prepared. That's happening right now. We're, we're probably discovering that they can't log out a couple hours ago. And it's going to be a tough time. Akio Kokaiba, though, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. 
Morph Combat Trainer from the Holodeck. I love it. No numbers on Oculus Pro, but the Quest Store has generated $1.5 billion, billion dollars in revenue from device and digital sales over its lifetime so far. Full Dive really is the only VR for me. I did see a tweet to that effect yesterday. No joke. Yep. It's all over. It was a pretty momentous day. I mean, people have been waiting on that. Sword Art Online is no joke. You know, it's a big deal. Uh, whether you like it or not is up to your perspective. I personally like it. But uh, regardless of if you like it or not, it is still a huge anime. And having a date match up to an actual date is fun. Okay. Iron Man. After winning the ability to work exclusively with Disney on the Star Wars franchise, Disney is yet again turning to EA for more game adaptations. Bloomberg reports that EA and Disney have inked a deal to develop three games based on Marvel Comics. A previously announced Iron Man game from EA... Look, I... Look, okay? I heard somebody the other day talk about how people were too hard on this game because of they, their expectations were too high thinking that they wanted to look like the actors from the original movies. And so they set on these, these character designs to look different from the movies, from the MCU... And I just want to be, I want to be that guy and say that that's bogus <laughs> because I don't care if you're going with MCU designs or not. They just look bad. And I don't, I am not afraid to say that. You say three or 30. He said three. The motive is already in development, but they the just other Marvel bad. games are completely unknown. EA Motive is currently about to release the Dead Space remake in the coming months with the Iron Man game being their next big release afterward. COO of EA, Laura Miel, answered in regards to the deal, we have an intentional, deliberate strategy to have a balanced portfolio. There will be Marvel fans who don't play other EA games. Do you think EA can create a successful Marvel franchise out of their upcoming games, like Insomniac has been able to do with Spider-Man? Or will EA fail like they have with a bunch of other projects? Let us know. This week marks the major... Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence. Uh, I don't really care that much about EA. I know a lot of people kind of rag on them for being a little bit scummy, and they are. But, uh, you know, so are most of the AAA companies out there. I, I'm, I'll i be surprised to see them be too successful. I think the MCU is really only successful because it is successful. <laughs> it's not really the characters. It's not really the, like, stories that they're telling. Um, it's the it's the spectacle that they've been able to create over decades of, of hard work and good design and careful planning and strategic marketing. And, you know, they're not they're not writing groundbreaking scripts. They're not telling stories that are beyond anything. So, you know, it's OK. Like they're they're going to they're going to do fine. I'm sure it'll, I'm sure they'll sell enough to continue selling games, but I'm not expecting these to be as good as Insomniac. I don't think any, I didn't expect the Spider-Man game to be as good as it was. It took me years before I played the Spider-Man game because I thought it was going to be just fine. Uh, but then I played it and I learned it was actually pretty excellent. A bit samey after a while, but pretty excellent. I wonder why they did that. Actors contracts include access to likeness, copyright usage. Either way, it didn't bother me. According to the devs, they wanted it to be different and discernible from the MCU. That was what they said. Um, I just don't agree. I think that that, that, or I do agree that I'm sure that's what they did, but I don't agree that that's a reason to make fun of or not make fun of their character design. I think it just looked weird. I think they just looked funny. Not that it matters that much. Like you said, it's a game and it still played the same way. And either you liked the play or you didn't. Imagine if I got upset because the movie characters didn't look exactly like comic books, right? Totally. Your release of God of War Ragnarok, Ooh. as well as a bunch of ports for the Nintendo Switch. Not to mention the return of a major franchise. Can it finally translate to a successful 3D game? On November 8th, Nintendo Switch will get a number of ports, including Sifu, Resident Evil 2, and Odd World Soulstorm, all coming at you this Tuesday. The return of Sonic the Hedgehog comes this week in the form of Sonic. We will be playing tomorrow, by the way. I've already got it. It's If I could pre-install it, it'd be pre-installed. I'm so excited for this game. Frontiers. Sonic's new journey begins with him and his friends, Amy and Tails, as they head to the Starfall Islands in search of Chaos Emeralds. As they approach the islands, sudden trouble hits their plane, and they are sucked into a dimensional portal. Sonic then finds himself separated from his friends and awakens in a strange digital world, cyberspace. He miraculously escapes cyberspace and arrives on Kronos Island, one of the Starfall Islands, full of ancient ruins where strange enemies roam. It is then up to Sonic to explore the Starfall Islands, find his lost friends, and uncover the mysteries around him. Sonic Frontier hits all platforms on November 8th, 2022.
God of War Ragnarok releases on November 9th for PS4 and PS5. Embark on an epic and heartfelt journey as Kratos and Atreus struggle with holding on and letting go. From Studio Santa Monica comes the sequel to the critically acclaimed God of War 2018. Thimble Winter is fully underway. Kratos and Atreus must journey to each of the nine realms in search of answers as Asgardian forces prepare for a prophesized battle that will end the world. Along the way, they will explore stunning mythical landscapes and face fearsome enemies in the form of Norse gods and monsters. The threat of Ragnarok grows ever closer. Kratos and Atreus must choose between their own safety and the safety of the realms. God of War review embargoes lifted this past week, and the game currently sits at a 94% on Metacritic. And that's all for this week. I just want to give a huge shout out to the Crossfire community who showed up big time as we raised a thousand dollars for Children's Hospital of Colorado through our extra life stream this past Saturday. So right Saturday. at it. I'm Russ Dornish, the host for Crossfire News. You are loved. You belong. You matter. We'll see you next week. God bless. All right. Very good stuff. Chats in the clap. Chats in the clap for Russ. Appreciate you. I'm going to go share that link, folks. As always, be sure to go give them a like. Uh, drop a comment for me. Let them know that they're great and that they're putting on some great material. Uh, subscribe to them if you haven't already. We want to shout them out and uh, share some love with them for sure. We love Crossfire and the stuff that they do. We want to support them as best as we can, especially creating content that we can utilize here at Checkpoint. What could be better than that? Um, and it sounds like they reached their goal, so yay! Wonderful. Uh, trademark infringement. How dare you tell people they matter? Uh, Sifu, I want to play it, but it doesn't look like it has any re replayability behind, uh, beyond a second playthrough. My advice, Kuro, would be to play it. I'd play it. Um, Sifu is an excellent game, and you really won't need to replay it. Uh, as you said, it's not really a replayable game, but you will play the levels themselves enough times to be satisfied. And that's what I'll say about that. You will get your fill, is what I can say, of playing each level. Uh, did you see the reviews today for Sonic? I did. I'm pretty happy about it. I think they look pretty good. Um, I'm I'm fine. Delivers best experience in one playthrough. You could say that. Yeah. Um, I think a 7 out of 10 is pretty fair. Uh, for a Sonic 3D game, I'm pretty excited about it. I think that a 7 out of 10 to most is probably going to be an 8 or 9 out of 10 to me from Sonic. Uh, I did see one guy give it a 1 out of 5. I'd never heard of them before. I'd never heard of their their uh, their website, but it was like in the big list. Uh, and there was one that was a one out of five, and I almost laughed out loud um, because I just the the game is not a one out of five. There's no chance it's a one out of five, um, especially not when literally everyone else gives it a better score. Whenever the one you're the one unknown publisher who gives it a one out of five, uh, all I see is I would like some attention, please. Could I have some attention, please? And uh, yeah. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way it's a one out of five. I bet you it's a six or seven out of 10. And for me, gonna work its way up to an eight or nine. Um, if the story can do well, then it'll be a 10 for me because I love Sonic's story. I love the designs and the characters are nostalgic for me. If they have a chow garden, it's an 11 out of 10. I don't think they're going to. If they did, I will lose my mind. So, you know. There's that. It is made by the same guy who made Sonic Forces. I didn't hate Sonic Forces. I didn't love Sonic Forces. It was somewhere in the middle for me. Probably about a seven. Again, six or seven out of 10. Um, Generations was excellent. Generations was a good eight or nine. So I love Sonic. I love the games. I love the 3D games are what I grew up on. I didn't grow up on the 2D Sonic. So the 2D Sonic doesn't really mean as much to me nostalgically, if that's a word. So these videos are so well put together. You should tell them that. I'm sure they would love to hear that. Um, they do a great job and all the encouragement that they need would be great. Uh, did you play God of War? I have not played God of War. I have watched, no, Charity Time is still up there. Uh-oh, I'm gonna go ahead and take that down from Stream Elements. Um, I have not played God of War. I have seen it and experienced a portion of it. Um, it's one of those that remains perpetually on the backlog that I almost just don't have, I don't have time for it. Um, but I've definitely heard that it's incredible. I think it's the only thing that really stands a chance of taking um, Game of the Year from Elden Ring. So I'm rooting for it because I want Elden Ring to not get Game of the Year. I don't mean that. They're fine. They're great. It's a great game. Stained has God of War. 
pre-ordered and a countdown now shows. It's so exciting. I'm excited for people to get to play it. Um, God of War is one of the many, along with the Horizon Zero Dawn, as I mentioned earlier, that just remains on my perpetual backlog of ARPGs and uh, open world games that I'm just not sure I'll ever get to. At this point, I've just given up on the Assassin's Creed and Far Cry games. I'm just convinced I'll never get to experience them. But who knows? Who knows? But here I am out here playing games like Ghost Song. I just love indie games. I love indie games so much, you guys. Uh, they are so my preferred experience. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Did I miss anything? Love you, Russ. But the last segment was the last segment uh, sponsored by God of War. Yep, yep, yep. You mentioned all my favorite games, and that's wonderful. I love that you love all of those games. It makes me happy that people enjoy them. They are there for people to enjoy. A lot of money and effort and work is put into them. Uh, and they are people's passion projects, and that's excellent. But in the same way, I don't expect everyone to play Pokemans, even though I will play every Pokemon game ever made. Um, I don't expect people to come play the Pokemon game. I just don't foresee myself playing many AAA games. That being said, I could play God of War. Uh, could. I could. You've tried. You tried. You tried, Stain. I gotta give it up to you. You tried one Pokemans. You did try. And I'd be down to try God of War if I ever found a spare. How long? Let's see. Hang on. Let's look it up real quick. Let's just look it up. Twenty and a half hours. Fifty-one hours for completionist. That's actually not that bad. Twenty and a half hours is not too bad. That was a long time. Man. The uh, yeah, the thing is, the thing is, is we'll just see. <laughs> it would it would have to be a uh, a a drought of gaming for me, and I don't foresee that happening for a while. I typically play two types of games at a time. I read a lot of books, I watch a lot of shows, but games my brain can only handle so much. So I play. Uh, I play two, two games at a time normally, one of which, or maybe three. I normally play like a brain dead game, like Marvel Snap is my brain dead game right now that I can play while watching my daughter or whatever, while holding while holding my youngest in my arms. I can have Marvel Snap in the other hand. Um, then I have like a really narrative heavy game. So typically like a visual novel, something that I cannot have something going on in the background that I have to be totally focused. And then I have a game where it's kind of a like, more intensive than a marble snap, but not so intensive that I have to have my brain engaged so I can listen to a podcast in the background while I play it. And Ghost Song was really a great game for that. So I'm always looking for games that I can have on in the background and or have to have things on in the background because my something about my digital native brain just wants all the things. I don't know what it is. I'm certainly non-diagnosed and I'm not complaining about my life or my lifestyle, but I do think, I do wonder sometimes if there isn't some part of me that was undiagnosed ADHD or something. I do have a lot of things that I like flare up <laughs> that tend to be uh, uh, pretty, pretty consistent with people's experiences with ADHD. I'm the opposite. I need to focus on the games I play. Nothing else is going on. And that's why I don't play many games is because I never have that time in my life where nothing else is going on. Because my brain needs other things going on. Gotta say, getting that adult diagnosis of ADHD was a total game changer, yeah. I've got this stream running and it's keeping me from playing Darksiders 3. Go play some Darksiders 3, Stain. Don't let us distract you. Don't let us distract you, my friend. All right. Let's get into some Pokemons, yeah? Any other comments or, or, or thoughts about Crossfire? I mean, obviously we can keep on talking about it as we're going on, but... Keep meaning that's very funny. <gasps> no, they didn't like my joke? What? Did my, did my go live notification not work? <laughs> oh no! It was a joke, Twitch! So did you guys get a notification that the checkathon was live? Because my go live didn't get work? Man, they are so touchy with their go lives. They are so touchy. I made, you guys wanna hear my joke? This was the joke I made, okay? This was the joke I made and it said that it could not get posted. What does an electric type Pokemon say when 
getting when they get gassy while drinking milk. I'm zap dose intolerant. I thought that was hilarious. Who knows what word is even getting cued? Maybe intolerant? I don't know. Oh. Every now and again, I'll try to put in the word baby. Because I'll be like, what's up, baby? Because that's how I like to do my, you know, my intro sometimes. And uh, if I if I put in baby, if I put in baby, they're like, uh, inappropriate. Or no, it's not even baby. They'll let me put in baby. They will not let me put in babe. They won't let me put in babe. So down on the bottom bar, it just said checkathon. It should have updated now. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous, Twitch. Oopsie, wrong one. Not even they bad. Weird with their meta censorship. Yes, yes, indeed. So some of you may recall in Pokemon White, we just beat Alisa or Alessa or however you pronounce her name. And got another gym beige. We're gonna go ahead and pause Spoofy. Goodbye, Spoofy. We'll miss you, Spoofy. We're gonna crank this down. I'm gonna give it to negative, negative 12 decibels. See if that's a better level. Still looks a little loud. I might go down to negative 18. This game is so loud. Uh, I lied though. I did have the checkathon running while I played Amnesia, or else I wouldn't have lasted more than ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, Amnesia is pretty spoopy, pretty spoopy, man. I'm I'm so surprised you actually played that game. I don't think I I don't know. I mean, I like spooky games, uh, and I'll play them on like stream, but by myself, I don't know. I don't know about playing spooky games by myself. Um, my back is killing me today, so I'm probably gonna go cozy mode and just stick in cozy mode today if that's cool. I think that I probably, probably should do the opposite, but I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. So I have voice mod now hooked up, and so I'm thinking about giving one of our uh, one of our girl voices to an actual girl voice. We'll see. We'll see. Because I have a voice that actually sounds somewhat feminine as compared to my like. Oh yes. Let's see if it sounds good. Let's give it a let's give it a test. Yeah. So that, so that, so that, um, Bianca's voice. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I have never bought a lottery ticket in my entire life. And my wife just texted me and said, you should buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks, but no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm, 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 I would prefer keeping my Methodist credentials. Thank you. All right, let's hear how this sounds over stream. What's going to be tricky is not changing my voice. So this is a woman voice. Oh no, she sounds so remark. But she does sound more like a girl than me. She almost has like a, like a raspy. Yeah, I kind of like it. She's like Chloe. Gladys. <laughs> The cake is a lie. Ooh, the laugh sounded real bad. Man, it sounded better in the testing. Alright, this one just straight up changed me to a girl, it says. Let's see if this sounds any better. <laughs> no, no girl sounds like such a way. It just sounds like I'm on helium. That's why this one sounds so much more realistic, I think. If it didn't sound like I was coming through a robot, it would sound super realistic. Interesting. Alright. Let's get into it. Let's play some pocket mans. We'll just keep our voices going for now. Um, so I just beat Elisa... I don't honestly know what mons I have right now. Sitting pretty. 
Everybody looks pretty tough. Let's move on along. Oh, it's Autumn! Has it always said that? <laughs> Why well, was it in such big font? So we beat our gym badge, so I guess that means we need to like move on. Do we just move on? Did I, did I forget some pomp and circumstance that happened in the last episode? What's up, Zando? You got it. Movie, movie, game, and it got job on. This time on Dragon Ball Z, it's time to got jump on. Now that we actually got started with our game, we need to pause. How dare we try to actually play a game on a checkpoint stream? Impossible. Ba -ba -ba. Reverse, reverse. I guess I got to turn my controller upside down. I don't have a controller, though. Missed. All right, Zando, here is your movie movie game. Looking for amethyst earrings for advent slash lint. To get a really good purple, I would need to size up significantly. I mean, I have to do it, right, for liturgical purposes. I think it's only right. It's only right. Uh, Xfinity Internet Blues. Tech has been here for three hours, and we aren't any better than when we began. No, Zando, I remember uh, that the checkathon you were mentioning that your internet was weird. I'm so sorry. That's such a headache. Yeah, that is such a headache. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, these are two movies that I've seen very rarely, maybe once. <clears throat> Can this high school heartthrob turn a nerdy girl into prom queen and then turn her into a 1960s one-hit wonder band managed by Forrest Gump? That's a lot. Can this high school heartthrob turn a nerdy girl into prom queen and then turn her into a 1960s one-hit wonder band managed by... Wow, Zando! I mean, I thought for sure that I read it way too fast the first time and there was no way you would get it. Um, but absolutely, it is She's All That Thing You Do. Chats in the clap for Zando. Holy moly. Incredible. Incredible. That's that's because Zando is so frustrated right now with his internet. And so he's like, well, if I'll just, I'll just, I'll just be the encyclopedia then. Oh, hey, thank you. I, I needed that. That's wonderful to have. Love the macho brace. See, I don't know. Let's look at the... Where's the map, you think? Bag? I think I slept wrong last night. <sighs> I think that's why my neck hurts so bad. Um, this is Route 15. Yep, I think I know which way we need to go. <laughs> other way, other way, other way. Vamos, vamos, this way. We went the wrong way. All right, on to the next city. Oh, I'm supposed to be playing upside down. It's a little tricky to do with the keyboard. Okay, Google, set a five minute timer. It's not impossible, okay. Definitely not impossible. Eh. There are performers gathering on Route 5. Cool, you were worth talking to. The start of that musical phrase sounds like Ace Attorney writing. Absolutely. Wonder who writes the news on the bulletin board. Who watches The Watchmen? Did Gen 6 avatars get unlocked? They certainly did. Who are you, Zando? Who did you pick to be? I'm looking for you everywhere. Oh, Halucha, very nice. Was Halucha not already in it? I didn't realize he was Gen 6. Jaren! Check! Stop! You've got a bull badge, I've got a bull badge. Let's test who's stronger, you or me. This time, I'm gonna win. I'm a Wario. Is it Waluigi or Wario that says it? I'm a, I'm a Wario. I'm a gonna win. That tone of cool you're worth talking to is literally every Sunday morning conversation while prepping for worship. Impossible. I value all of all of my lady. They all provide good conversation 
before a stressful worship service every time. I don't, if I tried Storm Throw, that's fine. I'm a Wario. I'm a gonna win. There we go. So it's Wario. That's why it wasn't working. I was trying to give it to Waluigi. Did I do nothing? Did I do nothing or did I miss? I wasn't paying attention. You guys, between finishing Citizen Sleeper and finishing Beacon Pines... I'm and yeah, I'm I'm just a little lost. I mean, I don't know. I enjoy talking to the lady while I'm getting set up, but I mostly talk about what I'm doing so they leave me alone. Yeah, I'm just joshing. I'm just joshing. What kind of game was Beacon Pines? Was it short? It was fairly short. I can't remember how long we beat it. It's on my backlog, if you want to see how long I beat it in. Um, but I think it was it was less than 10 hours and a really fun story. Really cute and sweet. Um, I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the designs. I enjoyed the antics that went on. It had some genuine like surprises for me. Uh, but all in all, just a really fun time. If you're wanting, If you're wanting a fun, cute, visual novel exploration story, then you got it. Dude, I'm so upset that I've started a new file to get more endings. The one I stumbled upon being uh, ended up being a dead end ending. Really? All my endings have been pretty open. I can't remember which one is the dead end ending. Maybe there's another ending I don't know about. I did all the ones I found on IGN. Is your backlogged link posted somewhere? Maybe exclamation point NPN. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume exclamation point NPN will take you to backlog. There are really only two people I have to guard myself from on Sundays. Disappointment has understood what's up. That's awesome. I had like 1,500 cryo and I was totally maxed on stats. Hmm. Do you remember the ending of the... of the? Did I really die? What is going on? You guys, I'm not paying attention because I'm enjoying our conversation so deeply. I'm very curious about what ending you got. That locked you in. Boaz is, <laughs> Boaz is having a rough time, man. <laughs> Do what? No! Ah, I keep hitting B, Zando. Zando, I blame you. Zando, I blame you, my friend. I mean, zoinks, dude. Am I gonna am I gonna do it? No, I'm not. Yikes, dude. <laughs> Yikes, dude. Heard my name and then my video froze. No. All right. Thank goodness. Oh, ouch. Did exclamation point NPN work? Nice. Yeah, that should be where my backlog is. Or did you mean backlog? As in... Like where all our VODs are posted. That's on our YouTube VOD channel. Checkpoint Church VODs. That was another thing that happened this weekend, in addition to our a very exciting uh, checkathon, was um, we had a very, very exciting uh, TikTok weekend with a, with a viral post. So stressful. To anybody that wants to go viral on the internet, let me just assure you, you do not. It's very stressful. Very stress-inducing. 
Thankfully, this was not as big as our as our Pokemon learning cut move. That one really was overwhelming. What happened? Uh, I posted the video where I got hyped about um, where I got hyped about Harvest Moon Wonderful Life being remade, a story of Seasons of Wonderful Life, and it turns out that like fifty thousand people agree with me. They're also very excited about this game. Panseer, that's the fire one. Chuck is fine. Still love that clip so much. That's a good one. Or if you meant what happened in our million, we had, so we had one video that hit a million, and that was insane. And that was because maybe 30 bats learned, uh, or taught me how to, um, taught me how to catch, or how to cut grass in Pokemon. And I thought he was trolling me. And then I tried it and learned. All that stuff should be on our TikTok, which you can reach by exclamation point socials. That's how to get our checkpoint socials. Why? Why can't I beat you? I don't remember her voice. Oh, you two are friends. That's nice how you're helping each other get better by competing. Okay, let's go. What's up? I'm sorry, is that Rin Goku? Ho! Oh, why if it isn't Elisa? That's Rin Goku, and I can't be told differently. Art festival's grand. Life should be enjoyed. Who is this man? This is Alder. Uh, this is Rin Goku, the Unova's champion. Whenever he's a champion. Champion? Why would the champion be goofing off in a place like this? I heard that remark. You're quite a judgmental young person, are you not? My name is Rin Goku. I'm the Unova Pokemon League champion. Pleased to make your acquaintance. For your information, I'm not goofing off. I'm on a voyage. I know every corner of Unova. Um, I'm Taryn from New Vema Town. My goal as a trainer is to become the champion. Hmm, traveling with a goal in mind is a commendable thing. And what do you plan to do after becoming the champion, Tanjiro? Uh, I said my name was Taryn, actually. And what else is there other than striving to become stronger? The strongest trainer, that's the champion. <laughs> becoming stronger. Becoming stronger, you say. Is that alone enough of a goal? Hmm. It's not that I'm trying to say your way of thinking is wrong. In my travels, I've helped many people learn to love Pokemon. I think that's important, too. If you play with those children, you might gain more of an understanding. Will you two have a Pokemon battle with those two? Hey, you two, come here for a moment. I'd like you, I'd like you to bone these noobs, children. Excuse me, children. I know you're both five years old, but I'd like you to absolutely annihilate these teenagers. But, but before that, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, let's battle. Weird call by Rengoku. Couple of hurt years, huh? Ooh, this couldn't. This is not gonna go well for them. Is this really what they meant to do? Are they sure about this decision? Are they sure about the choice they've made here? Okay. Kershmack. Thanks for your lurk, Perry. Appreciate you. So you didn't know about cutting grass. No! I had no idea. It blew my mind. I had I blew my mind. Bats just brought it up out of nowhere <laughs> and was like, have you thought about just cutting the grass? And I was like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I used to use cut when I got tired of fighting Pokemon in, in grass and silver and crystal. Never, never, never knew. Never knew. Never would have thought to even do that. I don't need rock polish. It was a Nuzlocke run. It was the start of our Nuzlocke that never finished. 
I'm sure that's why you gave us the advice, was because we could only catch one Pokemon in the, uh... In the Safari Zone, and I was like, I really wish I could go to the right Grass Zone, because you could really just catch them anywhere. And you were like, well, just go to the zone you want. Nicely done! You didn't win, but that was a good battle. Your Pokemon looked like they were having fun. Young man, if there are people like you who pursue strength, there are also people who are happy just being with Pokemon. There are many different people and many different answers. When it comes to what a champion should be, you and I may hold differing views, but so be it. Give it some thought. Let's roll. The, the Driftwell Drawbridge is just ahead. Huh, the champion is the strongest of the strong. That's all there is to it. Okay, there's still so many people to talk to. You guys really think I'm going to leave? Look, there's so much to do. You want me to leave? You want me to leave? Look at how much there is to do. I got to fight this backpacker. Oh, man. I can't be yawning. I, I said at the beginning of the stream I was rested and rejuvenated. I'm not allowed to yawn. I'm rested and rejuvenated. Um, so this week, folks, we've got a pretty weird week. I will not be streaming on Thursday. Uh, because I've got a meeting pretty much all day. And then I'll actually be out of town on Friday, so I won't even be around the Discord on Friday. I'll be going to the beach. Go to the beach, beach. Let's go get away. Oh, I see it. You do it in your own adventure. I do it, and I'm committing a crime. Typical double standard. Do-ba-do-ba-do-ba-do-ba-do. Minchino? Do I have Minchino yet? I do not! Aw, oh, Minchino's cute. I'll catch him. Sure! Let's see if we can catch ourselves a Minchino. Maybe. They'll probably kill him. It might one hit this Minchino and he's gone. But if he isn't gone, we'll try and catch him. Time will tell. Aw, Chuck! Chuck, don't kill the little squirrel! Chuck! Don't kill the squirrel, Chuck! Ooh, Solosis. Alright. Alright. We'll see if we can catch that. What? What just happened? What is Snatch? What is that move? Does he take my take my special ability? One of my favorite parts of this uh, this game that I'm working on is there's a whole plethora of Pokemon and Digimon jokes. The cell solos this. Ooh, that'll be fun use of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Solosis, the cell Pokemon, psychic type, height, one foot, weight, 2.2 pounds. Because their bodies are enveloped in a special liquid, they can survive in any environment. Folks, do we have a name? Do we have a name for Solosis? Any name? Any name? I'm always partial to the name Mitochondria. I don't know if it would fit. I'll give like 10 seconds to type in the chat. Just call it Powerhouse. Love it. Now, will we use Powerhouse? Who could say? Might just sit on the on the bench. Backpacker. 
Another one! Perfect fit. Pog Champ, indeed. Did uh, did the robot voice sound cool? Reading the uh, the reading Dexter's entry. The worst part about it is that I can't hear it, so I don't know if it sounds cool or not. Is Palpatode ground type? Palpatode might be ground type. Hmm. Yeah. You should record it sometime. Well, I do record all the vods. I can just go back and look. We post we post all the vods, all the vods. So you can always go back and watch it. That being said, if I ever say we like have a series that you really want to watch, you could always go back and watch the series that was completed. We have an entire let's play of a lot of games. The one way to know for sure ahead of time is to run a bunch of recordings off stream and decide what you like. Yes, and that's what I did. So uh, for those of you that have never used voice mod, um, it has a hear myself button. So I could do hear myself, but once I do hear myself, it comes through my desktop. And desktop is how I'm running Pokemon. So it, you guys would also hear it because of uh, Pokemon. Could I set it up to be its own source? I absolutely could. Do I want to do that? I do not. <laughs> I do not care that much. Audio routing is the pain from Naruto. From Naruto. Ooh! A twofer in the wild? Wow. Chrysica. Alright, I would like I would like a Minchino. You guys remember that volume of Naruto where um, where Pain forced Naruto to do audio routing and gave him like ten different sources that he wanted through three different devices? Brutal. Any kind of audio routing is a painful disaster. Even things like voice meter have bizarre limitations. Well, now OBS is doing it too. And so OBS has got its own built-in voice meter with the latest um, latest edition. And it works pretty good. But even still, it's just a pain. We talk about, uh, talk about for a second how unfortunate it is that there are so many absolute killer soundtrack edits for Naruto and none of them are canon. A lot of Naruto is pretty, is pretty sad. It's pretty, it's, it hurts. It is unfortunate. It's an unfortunate show. But nothing's quite unfortunate as the fact that the Mangaka will not let it die. Wait, built-in voice meter? It's not voice meter, but it is their own thing. But yes, they now have audio mixer sourcings. So you can go through native OBS and do multiple uh, sourcings. I don't know if it's a plug-in or if it's just built into native OBS, but it's definitely a thing now. In individual channels is now a thing. Bothers me that Windows hasn't done anything like that. Yep, that's the reality of Windows, isn't it? Everything is plugins. Everything is online. Anybody have a name for Mancino? Oh, hang on. Mancino, the chinchilla Pokemon. Normal type. Height, 1 foot 4 inches. Weight, 12.8 pounds. These Pokemon prefer a tidy habitat. They're always sweeping and dusting, using their tails as brooms. I like voice meter well enough that I can deal with its limitations for sure. But I guess if it ever breaks, if it ever breaks, then just set it up again in OBS. That's what I, that was, that, that is what I would do. Uh, could be named Dusty, could be named Dustin, could be named uh, Swiffer. Could be named um, Yeah, that's a couple. That's a couple that I got off the top of my head. Swiffer, we like Swiffer. Whoopsie. Sweet. Sweet. Especially because of the tail, absolutely. Which I think is actually a weird name. I get that it's like supposed to be Chinchilla, but Minchino, all I think of is a Cappuccino. The 
I guess. If you guys haven't seen that, the Naruto Mangaka just announced another project. And no, it is not. Um, it's not Boruto's kids this time. Bo Boruto's kids. Boruto. Party, you're going to breathe. I thought about having some more coffee today. Stealth Rock is pretty nice. Sand Attack is also really nice to have. Do I need a Dark Attacker if I have a Lightbird on my team? I don't think I do. Yeah! I found some Zinc! Found a random mineral on the ground. Yeah! Zinc. Zinc uh, provides a permanent stat boost to a single Pokemon. Do I have a water type? That's probably who's going to replace Brian eventually. All right, let's see if Chuck can do it. We'll just go ahead and run out his power points. Yeah, all the mineral typings just give permanent stat boost to a single Pokemon type. They can also, I think, affect IVs, but I wouldn't know much about that. I very rarely do IV training. I think I've done IV training on one Pokemon game and got over it real fast. Because there was one game where I got hyper-focused on doing the... I think it was Shield, or Sword and Shield. Um, I got hyper-focused on Shiny Egg method and trying to get all the Shinies. And in addition to Shiny, you can also do IV training there. And um, I was into it for a cool minute. Cool minute before getting burnt out. I, I do not envy people that just do that. Shiny IV training is a nightmare and I will never do it, yeah. I'll never do any of IV training. I don't care enough about competitive. There, I have no interest in competitive Pokemon. Sigilyph, is it flying? Let's find out. Sigilyph, are you a flying type, buddy? You look a little bit like a flying type. You might be psychic. Are you psychic flying though? You are. Will I survive long enough to make a difference? <laughs> no, I won't. Unless I do a crit, come on crit. Ooh, so close. Whirlwind, hey, that's fine. Pokemon is wild looking. It is quite interesting, isn't it? What's up, Ditto? Uh. I mean, any of them are going to take it down. I guess let's uh, let's do an ember. At least get that uh, little boost. I'm same typing. Stab. At least get the stab boost. I like his name, Sigilyph. Sigil plus lift. Do you think it's Sigilyph or Sigilyph? I've always said Sigilyph, but I guess it could be Sigilyph. Sigil Sigilyph. Sigilyph. What's up, Rengoku? How we doing? Good to see you, Rengoku. I'll show you all the moves that my Pokemon have mastered. Okay. I've done it. I've ordered new ear gauges. Gonna size up to six gauge, four millimeters. That's pretty wild. I'm excited for you. I have no frame of reference for what that means or feels like. But I'm very excited for that. For that shift. 
I always thought about getting my ears pierced back in high school because I had a girl that I had a crush on at the time tell me that I had great lobes. <laughs> she did. She did. She said I had perfect earlobes for piercing and that I should consider it. And I was like, well, I guess I've got, I guess I gotta do that. I guess that's the thing I gotta do now. And then I never did. Great lobes. <laughs> What a compliment, huh? Right under 3 16th is the size I'll be going up to. Trying to visualize 3 16th of an inch. Great Lobes is a very specific kind of compliment. It was very much that. One of those, one of those, um, those high school flirtation cycles. I do not miss it. Just under a quarter of an inch. I'm definitely visualizing something, but I could be very off. But I, I feel like I know what you're talking about. I'm excited for you, man. High school wasn't even real. I'm, I'm fine with that. I actually had a really good high school experience. I just had a lot of random moments that were not so good. But for what it's worth, given what other people have described high school as being, I feel like I lived a fairly, a fairly good high school experience. I was somehow able to maintain a certain sense of uh, popularity without being actually popular. Very passive and boring, and there were only a few really bad things. I was very much into the theater scene, and so I got a lot of attention in high school. <laughs> and now it's fed into weird things like being a Twitch streamer for a church. Like, that's weird, right? Never popular, but a lot of people knew who I was. Exactly, that's totally it. That's totally it. Like I was, I was definitely not in any of the cool clicks, but I was still asked to do the superlatives readings and to give out superlatives. I always emceed all the events, but was never invited to the after parties. <laughs> That sounds so sad. I love it. Oh, that's funny. And that's not even true. I was I was invited to a couple of bonfires. <laughs> it just sounded good to say it. <laughs> Ooh, being a click floater was the major feature of my high school experience. Yeah. In marching band and was tall. I was also tall. Was not in marching band. I chose theater over, over band. Literally my freshman year, I was in band and I like saw the theater kids across the way. Like that meme of, um, of uh, who's got their hand on the Conan O'Brien with his hand on the glass. That was me looking at the theater kids and then I joined them the next year and I never looked back. Marching band was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I believe it. What I remember about my marching band friends is that they seemed to have a really great time and they had absolutely no time to ever hang out. Once they were, once it was marching band season, I just didn't see them. I can see you being in theater. That makes a lot of sense. Do you have a favorite performance you did? Ooh, that's really tough. Probably my most, my most important show I ever did was Clue. We did Clue and that was such a small cast. And it was also like right in the midst of my parents' divorce. And so they were like my backbone. Uh, and so that was a really important, well, I mean, it is a yikes, but it's also like a really important moment in my life, you know, really important circle. And so that was important. My first musical ever was Camelot. I played Sir Lionel and I was murdered on stage and then resurrected by Lancelot's holy tears. Uh, my least favorite performance was probably Carousel. If you've ever done Carousel, if you've ever seen Carousel, I cannot imagine a more boring show. Hung out with the theater kids and the band nerds, and I loved it. Didn't care about having any other friends. I had my social circle and was happy. Yep. Carousel's a horrible show. It was really very, it was very rough. It was very rough. Yeah, but did Camelot, did Carousel, did Clue, did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Did, um, I never did any Shakespeare. I never did any Shakespeare. We may we maybe did some Shakespeare as like performances within our like um 
classes, but we never put on, we never performed Shakespeare. I did perform the uh, abridged Shakespeare company. What is it called? What is that called? Shakespeare abridged. I did perform one of their bits for a talent show. That was really fun. Um, what else was I in? Into the Woods. Yeah, that's probably it. But yeah, Hamlet is a great choice. Great musical. <laughs> musical. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I did not play the baker. I played Cinderella's Prince. Hagony. <laughs> so good. I was always the comedic. I was always the comedic character. I was the Pharaoh in Joseph. In the Woods was my sister's favorite. She was in theater. In the Woods is a fantastic show. My first musical was Children of Eden. So fun fact, I was invited back to my high school in college to uh, perform Children of Eden because they didn't have enough people for the cast. And so they were going to bring me on, I think as like a narrator role. But it made me a little uncomp and it was going to take a lot of time. And I was working a, I was working a halftime job as a worship leader at the time. So I was like, probably ain't going to work. Probably ain't going to work. Once you're like 19 and 20, it feels really weird to be with anyone under the age of 18. And then you, you hit like 25 and then it becomes totally normal. You have a good voice for a lot of things. I appreciate that. Shucks. Show is a tough one with a small cast. I think we did it with eight. I don't remember how many they had. But my other, my, one of my buddies from high school wound up going back and helping him out. Did the Shakespeare one axe competition every year. Absolutely loved it. That's super fun. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Shakespeare Bridge. Have you seen this? Be such a weird situation. Yeah. There's something about it. 18 to 25. You just can't go back to high school. You've got, you cannot, you cannot hang out with high schoolers from 18 to 25. I'll have to try and, I'll have to try and find it and see if I can pin it in random or something in the discord. Because if you guys have never seen that, it's hilarious. Man, I can remember dying laughing at it. I just got an electric guitar. Oh, I'm going to shred, dude. Oh, it's a prop for the Pokemon pictures. Shakespeare Bridge is great. I haven't seen that in a year. It's been literally since high school. I mean, I've probably not seen it since 2010, 2011. The complete works of William Shakespeare Abridged. Is that what it's called? One of the funniest shows out there. My favorite is when he spikes the skull of Hamlet. Uh, I think that was the one. No, that wasn't the one we did. Which I can't remember what bit we did. <sighs> Man, I'll have to look it up. Now to contact him. Right up there with noises off for me. It's me, Elisa. Please lower the drawbridge. I have a couple of trainers here who want to challenge you. Are you telling me they only lower this drawbridge when a new trainer comes around? Now watch this. You're telling me these regions are landlocked until somebody wants to go challenge a gym leader? But no, I was not the baker. I was Cinderella's prince, and um, it was very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable situation. Very uncomfortable. Because Cinderella's prince has a kiss. On stage kisses were, uh... <laughs> no, thank you. I have a TV gig and I have to go. The gym leader of the next town may take some getting used to. Do your best, both of you. What I am is a trainer. I prove I'm right by getting stronger and winning in... Okay, weird. Jaren, 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 buddy. Jaren! Jaren, my friend, we've known each other since childhood. Ombre! Come on. <laughs> Come on. What's going on here? Why did you just start this random diatribe, buddy? We've known each other our entire lives. Just be like, normal. Learn to bus or get cooties, a theater kid at my high school. Trying to teach my high school students to do stage kissing was always hilarious. It is one of the most uncomfortable things in the world. We managed. What? <laughs> well, I want a feather. 
Give me that feather. I found a pretty wing. Why does this feel like a Dark Souls bridge? I'm sorry, I'm clipping that for sure. Which one? <laughs> oh dear. Like a whole wing, so there's like a half a bird out there. I found a wing. Yep, not a feather. I found the whole wing. Found a clever wing. <laughs> just dead. Just dead birds. <laughs> just a bunch of dead birds that are falling on the bridge. Just a one-winged angel starts playing and Sephiroth shows up. All the birds are one-winged birds and they all have little tiny swords. Oh, man. We can rebuild. We can make him better. Stronger! What is all this? Why is the music so dramatic? A muscle wang. One of your clips made it into our latest highlight, by the way. Maybe 30 bats. Our latest hi highlights reel for March. Just dropped on uh, literally today. Uh oh, is molting. <laughs> I got no Pokemans. It said that occasionally Pokemon would attack with it. I'm going to get a Pokemon. I want to see what they're. What are they going to give me? What Pocket Man is going to fight me? Show me the feathers. It said there'd be a fight! It said sometimes the whole ding-a-dang Pokemon would drop. Oh, well, that was a very hairy, hairy way to say I got a pretty wine. Driftfell Drawbridge, plus this music. You're totally right, there's a Dark Souls boss fight in here somewhere. Doesn't it feel like it? It's so tense. And just the, like, the light, the light, like... Of the of the wing beating, like there's about to be a wing boss. <laughs> I'm coming up with so many jokes in my head right now. Oh, Nate wants a feather just like Harry Gary. <laughs> do you do you guys know there's a there's a Will Ferrell um. Uh, a Will Ferrell interview uh, of him talking about coming up with his Harry Carey impression and saying how it's not really an impression. It's just kind of his take on this person um, and how it was just totally random the way he devised the character. It's really good. I think it was on... Uh, what was it? What's the name of the show? It's the show with Sean Hayes and Will Arnett... I'm going to remember it. I'm going to find it for you guys. The only thing that's coming up is distractible because that's what I'm listening to soon. <laughs> the good news is that you have this banging tune to listen to while I look. it well I missed it hi yeah yeah I gotta find it Smartless. Smartlet. Smartless. Smartless. Smart less. To be smart less often. Smart less podcast. There's a great Will Ferrell interview on there. Love that deuce emo. What's up, Sharon? I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're the trainers Ellis was talking about, huh? I'm Clay. I'm the gym leader around these parts. Don't be expecting no welcome now. 
Because when we lowered that bridge, the team plasma guys we'd caught done escaped in all the ruckus. What a bother. We're grateful that you lowered the bridge. But how is it our fault that they escaped? You can say whatever you want. But what's important is y'all showed up and then team plasma escaped. Maybe it's a little heavy handed, but you all start looking for team plasma too. You're both talented trainers, aren't you? This is appropriation, and I will not tolerate it. Tell you what, you find Team Plasma. I'll let you challenge my jam. Life's all about give and take. Well, I suppose that's fair. It's absolutely not fair, Charon. But really, we would have looked for Team Plasma even if he hadn't asked. Don't say it's fair. I can get stronger while beating that bothersome bunch. Check, I'll go on ahead. It is objectively not fair. Battle combo move? Sure. I don't know if I can learn it yet. Fire pledge? Sure. Sure, why not? I'll take your super strong move. Oh. I have to use it while also using whatever the grass type is. I don't have the grass type. So I guess I won't learn it. What a bunch of work. <laughs> I don't want to work for my move. Carmen San Diego. My name's Charles. I want to get the attention of a girl, Alex, so I learned a style of Pokemon battling. It's called Triple Battle. Want to learn about it? No, I'm fine. Oh man, getting someone's attention is really hard. So I guess I'm going to learn how to Triple Battle. Is this gem going to teach me how to Triple Battle? I bet it's really good since they never bring it back for another game. Gotta be a really mechanic, uh, a really compelling mechanic. Really compelling mechanic that's not gonna come back. Gonna learn one way or another, yep. I'll figure it out. How, how tough can it be? How tough can it be? Watch it be completely incomprehensible. My bet is either Team Plasma uses it on me or the gem uses it on me. But why would they not have done it at the very first gym? You had the perfect opportunity. The reason I'm hanging around is because I want to hang around. Ha, if my Pokemon just knew to move safe, I could go on top of the water and I'd be hanging around in the water. I'm telling myself that that's Adam Duritz or whatever his name is from the Counting Crows. I've been hanging around this town corner. Been hanging around this old town so long. Do you think all people in the world can understand one another? Yeah. I think so too. Interesting thing to think. I would have thought that this area had a more like country music tone. Given the whole uh Play situation. But clearly not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Businessman. What's your name? 
Is your name Mr. Businessman? Ooh, Mr. Businessman. Ooh! Look at her. Look, everybody. It's Mr. Businessman. What does he call himself in Arrested Development? Mr. Manager. <laughs> it's Mr. Manager. <laughs> oh, it's Mr. Manager, you guys. Oh, no. I have to have a level 30 for him to be satisfied? I don't sell anything to people who don't have level 30 Pokemon. Just manager. <laughs> um, right, right. Just manager, just manager. Yep, there we go. You're looking great, Mr. Manager. Mr. Manager. No, just manager. That's <laughs> such a good bit. If you guys have never seen the first three seasons of Arrested Development, you're missing out. What did Charles do? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all sold out. That Charles guy bought everything I had. Was that who Charles... <laughs> Oh, man. You said, doesn't matter who? Doesn't <laughs> I have such a man crush on Jason Bateman, dude. I love I love the way he speaks. Mr. Manager bit is so simple, but always one of my favorites. It's a good one. Yeah, people always talk about the in the banana stand joke from that episode, but no. No, no. Or maybe it's not that episode, but that season. But the Mr. Manager bit is way funnier. <laughs> I'm thinking about that bit. Oh, yeah, I already talked to you. Doesn't matter. Who. All right. Well, I guess I gotta find Team Plasma. Ah, the cold storage. I see they murdered someone. <laughs> Man's just told me how to break enter. <laughs> Some, hey, mom? Mom? Some random guy just taught me how to be an E and just like the cold storage. Never forget the first time I saw the episode uh, when Rita walked on the water after breaking up with Michael. <laughs> oh, Michael. She's in love with me. Me. Ooh. There's some great bets on that show. Hey, one of your tricks, Joe? It's not my trick, Michael. Michael. <laughs> That's another great voice. Those are two of like my favorite voices in uh, in Hollywood. Is Jason Bateman and Will Arnett? My illusion. I watched the didn't didn't Netflix do two seasons with them? I watched the first one. I didn't hate it as much as everybody did, but it, none of them lived up to the classics. But I never watched the second season. If they did a second season, which I feel like they did, I feel like they did a season four and a season five. Launches a fireball that lights Tobias's hair on fire, and he can't go underwater as he dives into the pool. Netflix seasons had their moments, but they were barely a fraction as good as the original three seasons, for sure. So there were multiple seasons on Netflix. I've definitely only seen one. It's hard to recreate that magic. We're talking Arrested Development currently. We're also being into a cold storage plant. We're committing a felonious crime. But I made fun of a guy up here and called him Mr. Manager, and it started us on a whole diatribe about Arrest Development bits. <laughs> oh, there's them some good bits. And they keeps giggling to the jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. They just keep. They just keep. Tickling me, but I can't remember them well enough to reenact them for you guys. And I don't have a magic clip machine to pull them up. We asked Thelonious Monk. 
There are two seasons on Netflix, if I remember correctly. Season four was shot weird because they couldn't schedule the action at the same time. They tried to do this weird nonlinear story. That's the one I've seen. And I remember it being disconcerting the way they shot it. It didn't feel right. It wound up, it wound up coming across like rushed. I love that it's been bugging Sneaky that I've just been laughing. That I just keep getting tickled at Zando's little one-liners. It makes me think of the episode. <laughs> oh, that is funny. You guys. What a silly bunch we are. I don't have a single. Oh, thought I had a ground type move on Ditto. Maybe 30, what are you playing this week? Are you playing Citizen Sleeper on stream? <laughs> Let's go see a Star Wars. It makes me, like, remembering that show makes me wish that I would give, um... What is the show? What is the show with Dan Levy's son? Dan Levy? Dan Levy? No. Eugene Levy and Dan Levy. It makes me want to give that show a better chance. Shit's Creek. It makes me want to give that show more of a chance because I watched episodes of the first season. I probably watched the first, like, seven or eight. And, uh... I enjoyed it enough, but it just didn't grip me to, like, just push through the entire season. I gave it a, an honest try. It wasn't like I gave it, like, one or two episodes. But people love it so much, I want to love it. Maybe now that I kind of know what I'm doing, I might do that, or I've been promising myself I'd play the Spyro Trilogy for a long time. I owe Trombone the Spyro Trilogy. My wife loves it, but I felt like it was almost too predictable. Yeah, there were definitely some predictable elements to it. It would be a good... Honestly, I wish I could watch it with my wife. I think it would be way more fun. We just don't have the time. Uh, we don't have TV watching time anymore. If we watch a show, it's our quarterly, <laughs> quarterly binge of Love is Blind, which we're probably going to start the next season of Love is Blind soon. But that's a show that we would watch together. A helmet is an important tool for shock protection. I'm about to beat you over the head! Go to Legend Pokemon, I have one though. I just can't stand secondhand embarrassment, no AD for me. Oh man, it's so good. And I tell you, that show does it really, really well. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. It would either... I think The Office is worse. I think The Office is definitely more guilty of secondhand embarrassment. Like, Michael Michael Scott's level of, of discomfort is worse, I think, than anything on Arrested Development. Both shows have absolutely S-tier jokes in them, but on a level of embarrassment, I think that Office does it better or worse, depending on your perspective. I do get real embarrassed for the for the people on Arrested Development. But it's always like zany antics like Tobias. It's very rarely genuine discomfort like Michael Scott. Secondhand embarrassment cringe is impossible for me to watch. Then you probably have not seen The Office or enjoyed The Office. I don't mind it. Makes me happy that Parks and Rec got much better by season two. Yeah, they do it really well. Even when you do get embarrassed for embarrassed for the characters on Parks and Rec, they're not that bad. Has anybody been watching the new Blockbuster show? It's on my docket. Parks and Rec is probably my favorite of all of them as far as like emotional reasons. Like that's the show that got me the most emotionally bonded. Straight up killed 30 Rock for me. Oh no, I love me some 30 Rock. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, I love me some 30 Rock. Kenneth alone holds 30 Rock for me. Parks and Rec has a lot of character development mixed in with those moments, so it isn't that bad. No, it's super emotional. I mean, I can think of like one or two moments in the office where I teared up, but like most Parks and Rec seasons got me to tear up at the end. 
Couldn't get far in the office not saying it's bad. It's not my cup of tea. Oh, I, I binged every single episode. I love them all. I have yet to find one that I don't absolutely love. Uh, but I am very curious about Blockbuster. We'll see if I enjoy it. I loved Superstore. And it felt like nobody talked about Superstore, but it was so stinking funny. Last season was a hard watch for me, as in just not good, or as in you were sad it was over? It's definitely, I would say, I don't know, it might not be their worst season, but it was definitely a rough season. Chuck and Ditto absolutely look like uh, playground bullies. Thought the quality dropped pretty harshly compared to previous seasons, yeah. We got some good episodes. Was that the writer's strike, though? Was that season the writer's strike year? What's up, Splash? How we doing? How's your Monday treating you? How was your weekend? Whoopsie. Brooklyn Nine-Nine was real good until the last season or two, but that finale was almost perfection. So I watched Nine-Nine, and then it got canceled or whatever, or got held off, and then I never started watching again when it got uh, rebooted or brought back on. Resigned. Moved networks or whatever. So I still, I've never caught back up. But I liked Nine-Nine a lot. Nine-Nine was one of those that never, like... I never laughed out loud, but I always smiled the whole time. I was happy the entire episode, but it did not make me laugh as often. It got canceled, but then renewed on a different network within 48 hours. Well, I'm not saying that it, like, because it wasn't on, I didn't watch it. But I remember whenever it got canceled, my mind, like, switched off, and I was like, Doop. well, I guess that show's done. And then I just never, never picked it back up again. I'm not even saying it's a good reason. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what happened. Whoopsie. Always enjoyed 99. Very comfortable show. For sure. For sure. Whoopsie. I guess I just did whatever I did. Looks like whatever I just did, I did. Looks like I just did whatever I did. Who knows? Pretty consistently, the show I fall asleep to. I've never fallen asleep to a show a day in my life. Uh, my sister used to do that. She would put on Will and Grace. We were obsessed with Will and Grace. And so she would watch Will and Grace and put on the the uh, the, <laughs> the VHS, dude. <laughs> she would put on the VHS of Will and Grace. We had the season box sets. And she would put them on binge them. And then eventually we switched to DVD and then she could watch them all night long. That was how she fell asleep. Adrian Pimento is one of my all-time favorite characters. An excellent, excellent character. Do you ever listen to uh, his podcast? It's a good pod. Good pod. Don't know why I can't think of the name of it. All these podcast names are just escaping me today. How did this get made? How did this get made? Here we go. Sign to let some of them go, Nate. Never! You won't take me alive! It's my white noise. I need my brain to be focused on something familiar as I fall asleep. If it isn't, I just think myself awake. Uh, I have a white noise machine that serves as my white noise. Called an air purifier. My podcast I listen to is Broken Silicon. Tell me more, because I don't listen to that one, and I'm always looking to add another to the bunch. What's Broken Silicon? I have 220 podcasts that I listen to, and I love every one of them from the bottom round. Do -do. And it's because of returning to the beginning of our stream 
It is because of those podcasts that I've never played God of War. <laughs> Broken Silicon is a technology podcast about Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, etc. and the current state of processors and graphics tech. So it's like a news. Is it news podcast or is it like talking about the actual like creation of? Is it more of a doc or is it a news? Is it a documentary or news podcast? If it's a doc, I'm very interested. If it's news, probably not. I have my share of news podcasts. Those are pretty much the only podcasts that I unsubscribe from. I will eventually get tired of a news podcast. Sometimes news, mostly it's industry insiders and what's been happening in the space. Got you. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Let's give it a give it a think. He's pretty weak. I could take him down with just about anybody. Let's see if we can get Brian some exp. Excuse me, Timber, would you mind giving my Brian some exp? Now, if you ever need a podcast recommendation, you know who to call. Because I have all of them. Obviously, the best podcast to listen to is the Checkpoint Church Podcast Hub where you can get all of our nerdy sermons, episodes of the Nerds of Prey, episodes of the Level 2 podcast, and more. What could be better? Ooh! Vanillite! Oh, let's see. I'll try and catch it. Why not? Do you want to be my buddy? Do you want to be my buddy, Vanillite? Let's get somebody a little weaker to take you on, because I don't know if you're rare or not. Uh, Brian... I'm going to try to catch this vanilla if anybody wants to come up with a name. Is this the ice cream Pokemon? It is. I'll have to look up if it, if it, if it can learn any water type moves because I don't have a water type Pokemon right now. And I'd be just fine shifting out Brian for a water ice. Out of all the podcasts you listen to, which ones have you listened to the longest? Sure. Uh, probably three. Soft swerve is too many letters, I think, isn't it? No, it's the perfect amount. Man, how do you do that? How do you find the exact number of letters? <laughs> um, my first podcast I ever listened to was You Made It Weird with Pete Holmes. Then I started listening to The Drunk Ex Pastors. Then I started listening to What's Good Games. And that's probably it. Those are probably those are probably the the three. Those are probably my three first podcasts that I listened to. If you've never listened to "You Made It Weird" with Pete Holmes, if you're into progressive Christianity um, or New Ageism or um, realms like just outside of the Christian sphere, hang on. Of course, we got him. Number eighty-eight, Vanillite, fresh snow Pokemon, Ice type. Height, 1 foot 4 inches. Weight, 12.6 pounds. This Pokemon formed from icicles bathed in energy from the morning sun. It sleeps buried in snow. I like Bryce Cream. It does make sense that we replace it. But I need to know if he can learn a water type move. So we need to go to Bulbapedia. Whoopsie. Vanilla move set. It can learn rain dance. That's it. Nope. All right. I mean, it's still pretty cool to have an ice type Pokemon. I'll use it for a little while, but it'll probably be replaced eventually by a water type. Rice cream. Was it a capital? Yeah, it was. I still have not heard if anybody is watching Blockbuster. If anybody's watching Blockbuster, let me know what you think out there, because I'm debating whether or not to put it up on my list or not.
I haven't started yet, but I will. Let me know what you think when you do. If I haven't started it by then. I'm definitely excited about Randall Park, and I'm definitely excited about Amy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine on it. M M Melissa? Marissa? Fumero? Melissa. Melissa Fumero. Definitely excited about the two of them. And then JB Smooth. I don't really care about JB Smooth, but he's at least the other one I recognize. Melissa Fumero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Proud of myself. There's also Rose's mom from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Is she in it? I don't know if her character registers in my brain from Nine-Nine. Did I go to withdraw? Let's see. Oh, I had Temple this whole time. I had a water type. Mmm. Mmm. No, I said I would I said I would use Bryce Cream. We haven't really needed a water type anyway. Plus I don't really like Palpitoad. If we get a cooler Pokemon though, if we get a cool water Pokemon, I am probably gonna use it. Crazy Frog. We've had some good names this go round. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've done a save state, you guys. Can you imagine if I reset the thing? Save state. Bleep. That would have been awful. I would have been so mad. It happened to us once. I think I just outright stopped playing a, a game one time. <laughs> Does anybody remember that? I know Bleach was here. There was one time where we were playing a game and I accidentally hit, instead of save, I hit uh, reset. And I'm pretty sure I just stopped. <laughs> I'm never so sure I just stop playing. Check. Do you think Team Plasma could be in there? I don't like cold places, but we have to check. What a bother. I want to talk to this guy. Because he's testing your abilities? Weird. Weird flex, Clay. Well, still, is there anything more important than strength for trainers, like the champion said? I'll never understand just by thinking about it. What a bother. Let's hurry up and check inside. I'm going to go ahead and move Ditto to the top spot. Probably need to take away this item. Level 26 already. He's fine. Bryce Cream can have the exp share. There you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. Maybe I ought to look at the other items, too. I've gotten a bunch of items. I don't honestly know what they do. If the holder of this item takes damage, the attacker will also be damaged. <laughs> what? Pretty wing. This feather is just beautiful. Just a regular feather. It has no effect. Macho brace. Soft sand. Black glasses. Sunstone. Sue bell. Ultra ball. I don't think I have anything that's needed yet. Scope lens is kind of nice. Don't have a grass type. I don't have anything that has that yet. No, I don't think I need any of these. Rats. That Rocky helmet's pretty crazy. Alright, off we go. Did I ever move Ditto to the front? Oh, did they really do this mechanic again? What would compel them? What would have compelled them to do this mechanic again? What would have told them, oh, our trainers loved when we did this with our other games? Like, what? Who told them this was a good idea? It was like, we better do the ice slidey thing again. They loved that last time. They didn't learn. Yeah, it was in silver. It was in... Um Diamond and Pearl. Here it is again. When will you learn that your actions have consequences? I have to ask, and I apologize if I did already and forgot. Have I played Paper Mario the Origami King? I thought about it, but I heard bad things. I heard it was I heard it was lackluster. Was it good? 
I really enjoyed the old. I, I really enjoyed Thousand Year Door. That Thousand Year Door. That was probably my favorite. I would definitely be down to play it if it went on sale. First party Nintendo games on sale. You're so funny. I know, I know. Uh, oh yeah, it's one of my favorite games ever. I didn't think I'd like it because it doesn't really compare to other Paper Mario games, but it's hilarious and fun to play with people watching. The only game I've ever streamed all the way through. Good to know. Maybe I'll think about it. That'd be a fun one to play on stream. For sure. No, you know the one the one Nintendo game that does go on sale that looks like a first party game that isn't is uh, Mario Plus Rabbids. Always on sale. Why is he so big, though? <laughs> it's the Poke Titan. Hmm. I bought it because it's always on sale and still haven't actually played it. Origami or uh, Rabbit Mario plus Rabbits. You'd enjoy Mario plus Rabbits. You'd have a fun time with it. This is a good game. I haven't played the new one. Is it out? You'd enjoy it. Good, it's good. Solid game. For an Ubisoft. <laughs> could you imagine the crossover between Pokemon and Attack on Titan? I could not. I could not imagine the Pokemon crossover between most things. Pokemon is such a good franchise in that way that like their IP is so strong that they could really combine with just about anything and it would be really interesting and fun. And they respond by partnering with none of them. It's not true. Pokemon has certainly become much more interested in partnering in the past years, in my humble opinion. They've become much more, uh, much more loosey-goosey with their IP. The fact that so many things exist, the fact that McDonald's has so many partnerships and things like that, like, I think Pokemon's gotten a little bit more... A little more lax on their uh, partnerships. Not as much as Digimon doing a horror game. A real bad one. A real bad horror game. I would have preferred if it had just been a visual novel. Were you not with us then, Kuro? I couldn't remember if you were around. Yeah, we played through hours of it and made no progress. It was so bad. Ooh, I do not miss that game. <laughs> and it sucks because I was so excited about that game. I literally, I remember Digimon Survive first getting announced in like 2016 or something. And me and my buddy, so out of sense is one of the, one of the first members of Checkpoint. And me and him would always talk about Digimon Survive and how it's always getting postponed and delayed. We're so excited for it. We can't wait till this game comes out. And then, mmm. Mmm. It was so awful. I'd love to blame it on bad writing, but the writing wasn't even that bad. Oh, you guys, voting is tomorrow. I hope you're, if you are a, a, a U.S. citizen, I hope you are extending your ability to vote and doing it. But most importantly, <laughs> my phone will stop ringing every three minutes. It was not, I first started watching around the time you were playing it. I just can't attend most of your streams because of work. I feel like Mondays and Fridays, I work from home so I can attend those days. Well, there you go. All about making it work, right? We're happy you're here when you're able to join us. Dude, I do not like the Timberline. I do not like him. Why does he have why does he have uh, an iron beam? Does he always have the iron beam with him? Can he put down the iron beam? 
Girder, is someone making you carry the iron beam? Do we need to go to a private room so you can tell us that someone here is making you carry that beam? Girder. It's a part of his head. If it is, that makes me feel so much worse for him because he's having to like carry it so it doesn't crush his spine. Uh, maybe. Nope, he just removed it. It's maybe, it's maybe a part of his hand. Maybe. But if he switches hands, then our theory goes out, out the door. Smack. And why the clown nose? Why would they put a clown nose on this man? On this, on this middle-aged gentleman? Why won't they let this middle-aged gentleman put down this iron beam? I'm gonna die if that's part of the Pokédex entry. <laughs> well, now I gotta evolve my timber into a into a, a Gruger, just so we can know. Do you heal my Pokémons? Nope. Okay. Well, back to town we go. You see how his veins are poking out? He's so gross. They're so gross. And I don't think that's the final line either. I think they're still Conkledur. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Timber Girder and Conkledur, which is the worst name ever. It's so bad. Entirely a part of his workout routine. It's just something he carries around with him. It's optional. Amazing names. Bad names, Kuro. Bad names. We did get some good moments out of Digimon Survive Crew. If you ever get a chance to go back and watch the highlights from it, whenever they eventually get posted, uh, there were it was hilarious. The horror in it made me die laughing every time because it was ridiculous. Can I go in here? Is this a room? Nope. Just a false door. Typical Hollywood elite behavior, making fake buildings. What is this, the Warner Brothers lot? I haven't been that way, but I definitely was about to go this way, so I'm gonna just do it. Shoop, 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 shoop. The entire building is just a facade. Don't you lie to me. Hey, it's Vanilla. We just got one of your brothers. One of your brother cousins. We just adopted one of your brother cousins, Vanilla. Ready for the new game coming out? I am right, brother. I am ready. I am so tired of seeing spoilers, though. I keep getting things spoiled, and I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm trying my best to stay clear. But I just can't. I can't stay clear. I wish they would have done what they've always done. Uh, that's not true. I'm really happy that they're experimenting with their marketing and their strategy. Very excited for it. However, I just want to know the starter evolutions and then the rest I want to discover as I'm playing the game. And I can't do that. I can't do that because they keep making so many hype videos and I've got to watch all of them. You have Violet pre-ordered. We're doing both. I will do I will do Scarlet and Checkpoint will do Violet. And we'll I'll play through them. I'll play through uh, the Violet file here. Scarlet file on my own. I was told this is the Pokemon to do a dual purchase on. Real, ooh, ooh, oh, do say more. Or don't actually, because I don't want to know. No spoilers. The facade itself, believe it or not, is it, itself is just a complicated pastiche. Pastiche, not used enough. Not a word I use often enough. I really need Abimosis to get some levels on him. Her. On her. Friend is getting Scarlet. Rock on! I'm super excited. Do you know who your starter is going to be? Mine is going to be Cat. I'm definitely starting with Cat. Forgot that your name is Moses. Yep. Now, I don't know who I'll start with here on, on Violet. We'll probably start with a different one. So I will, I will make you guys... I will not allow you guys to choose Cat. I'm most interested in Apple Dragon after that.
Oh, this is where we were earlier. Oh, neat. Okay. Okay, fun. Neato. Ready to battle. I'm freezing. I'm frozen solid. Yep. Sprigatito. What do you mean, Apple Agon? Apple Agon? An Apple Agon teeth? But Dr. Agon. Considering how Apple Deck uses Dr. Way. Look at that. We made the same joke at the same time. Goodness. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us go. We will see. We will see. The issue is that I know that I'm going to be playing that game every waking minute that I have off of stream. And so I know I know that I'm going to be spending more time playing it off stream than on stream. And so I'm probably not going to have many big reactions to things on stream. I'll try my best to maybe ham up some of the bigger moments, but I'm kind of bummed about it. But I can only stream as often as I can stream. <laughs> I do have a family. I have a family and a life, and so I can't, I can't stream 24-7. I wish I could. Especially when new games like that come out. If I if I could, I would easily do a 24-hour Pokemon stream the day it came out. Now we might do a bonus stream. That's up for grabs. We'll probably won't have to wait till Monday. We'll probably do a release day stream. We'll see. But I'm real excited. Of course, we're start we're starting Sonic Frontiers tomorrow, so we're just playing all the hype games. We're playing all my hype. This is my kind of hype. Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two. No thank you. No no thank Modern Warfare you. <laughs> yeah, I think Sprigatito is gonna be the one, man. I think Sprigatito is gonna be the one for me. Everybody's complaining about it definitely being a bipedal third form, and it's almost certainly going to be. Um, but I just love that. I love I love the grass cap. I'd be just fine keep it in first form because it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. No, I'm so cold. I'm shivering. Woobat! Aww. What's the next form? Swoobat or something? D -d 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 Change into ultimate. Swoobat! Look at him. Gross tail. His tail's real nasty. Don't like it. Don't care for his tail, though. You're going to name yours Catnip? That's a great name. Excellent name for us. Sprigatito! I don't normally name on personal files. We'll see. Oh, is someone in there? How do I know? Probably, yeah. Shall we go then? I reckon. My health fine? Should be all right. I guess I will, uh, why not? Why not? I'll give myself a little health boost. Self a little potion. What do I got going on? You got three potions here. Go for it. Well, just know that any of you, if any of you are on the fence about buying Scarlet or Violet or not, know that you will get to experience them here on stream. So, Zenzelin. All of you, cuddle around me. I can't take this cold. Whatever, I can't believe you were really hiding. It's a bother, but if you're cold, shall I show you outside? Pokemon are our king's friends. While we're taking care of them, we can't let any harm come to them here. Everyone, drive these intruders away. Understood, Zenzelin of the Seven Sages. Put them up, because here we come. Put, put them up, put them up. That's so many. Check, let's each take care of one side. Dude, that's so many. They didn't need to. They didn't need to throw so many at me. I'm one of the tougher team players, my members. We'll see, won't we? I'm putting my bets on pretty average.
I do wish Ditto would have a better move by now. I'm level 25, and I've still just got Ember. What are your thoughts on Wiglet? I think Wiglet's fine. I probably won't use him on my team. We'll see. I'll definitely be catching one. I intend on completing this Pokedex. We'll see. We'll see just how many they are. I've done it with the past couple games. I did it with Arceus. I did it with Diamond. I've done it with um, Sword and Shield. My game plan will be to complete the decks, but time will tell. That's what I've enjoyed doing. If uh, if the shiny hunting mechanic is the same as Arceus, I'll probably do some shiny hunting. Because I loved the shiny hunting on Arceus. It was so good. I'm one of those folks that actually really enjoyed Arceus, so I'm hopeful that they borrowed a lot of mechanics. He is a goofy little Gus. I saw some art today that was a... Um, a normal Diglett and an Oddish that had buried himself in the ground to look like a uh, Ditto. And then Wiglet was like coming in from over top and was like, get away from my woman. Get away from my friend. Did I miss? Did I hurt myself in confusion? What happened? A twice? Can't really take another hit. Looked away for half a second and I've, I've missed everything. All right, Chuck. Let's do it, buddy. Where is Chuck Bartowski today? Again? 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 Come on, buddy. Again? Another one? What is going on? Holy moly! That's so many times in a row! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you kindly! Thank you! Thank you! You were supposed to be doing that the whole time! No more fan mail! Thank you, thank you! If you take something away, I'll take it back! Remember that! Who are you? How am I supposed to win when I'm shaking because of the cold? Yeah, that was the problem. I guess lesson learned, I probably should have healed. Probably should have healed earlier. Alright, next one. <laughs> In my own way! <laughs> In my own way, I guess I'm pretty strong. Aww. I feel bad for this grunt. Oh, can I let her win? <laughs> I feel really bad. I feel super bad for her. I guess I'm okay in my own way. I'm not that bad when you really think about it. Honey. Baby, come on. Yep, I am very, very, very excited. I'm very excited for all the gym leaders. As I understand it, there's more badges this time, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the kind of non-linear way that we can play the game. Uh, I'm excited about all the new characters. I'm excited about the new environment. I'm excited about the co-exploring. I plan on doing some game together streams that way. Um, I'm very excited about all of it. I think it's going to be a great time, and we're going to have so much fun. And I'm going to love every single minute. And I can't believe we're like less than two weeks away. You realize that? That's so wild. That's so wild! Have you learned your lesson now? I'm such a sore loser. I mean, we are not that many sleeps away. Could I leave and go heal? And save a lot of these items. Although I've not spent a dime yet in the game, so... I'm probably okay to go buy a few items if I want to. Hello!
All right, Lipard. I don't really have anyone that's very tough against you. I'm just do roll out. Just get rid of you real quick. I'm kind of thinking about going back and playing Friends of Mineral Town, but then I know that Sonic Frontiers comes out tomorrow and I'm going to play a bunch of it. And so I'm like, also, maybe that wouldn't be a good idea. Maybe I should hold off and just play another burner game tonight and then plan on Frontiers to overtake my life until uh, Pokemon come out. But then I guess Frontiers could also be real bad, but I really don't think it's going to be. The real test, the real test is that I'm planning on playing it on Steam Deck. So that's going to be the real challenge. Is it going to be able to hold up on the Steam Deck? Surely. Surely. If, uh, if whatchamacallit, Cyberpunk can hold up on the Steam Deck, come on. Frontier's going to be just fine. Got it. Just got to be fine. Now I did have the latest the latest Pokemon Gimme Ghoul spoiled for me, and um, I actually really like him. I've seen a lot of hate for Gimme Ghoul and the design being kind of lazy, but I love it. I think he's super cute. I think the dousing rod antenna are super cute. I think his little eyes are devious and fun, and I think the mimic mechanic is going to be so interesting in the world. It gives me such an encouraging vibe. What's up, North Hill Live? How are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, North Hill Live, for the raid of seven viewers. Chats in the crop for North Hill. How we doing? What's good? What's up? What were y'all playing? How are we doing? Raid time. Dropping spices. What were y'all up to over on your stream? Appreciate you being here. Folks, we're Checkpoint Church. Church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. Hi, SS Pineapple. What's up? Played the Cowboy Life Sim. Interesting. Do you feel like a cowboy? I could have been a cowboy. Could have been a moon nice. And I don't know that song. <laughs> that's what that song sounds like in my head. I don't know how that song sounds like that, but that's how it sounds right now. That's how it's sounding right this moment. I don't remember who's tough against Scraggy. I think, it, uh, I think, I think Adam Moses might be. That's dope, though. Very fun. Cowboy Life Sim. Love it. On the horse with no name who became Dewey. We're playing Pokemon White. This is my first time ever playing this Pokemon game. I'm a big Pokemon fan, but I took a big gap for many years. And uh, now we're playing through White, and then next we're going to play through X and Y. If I can figure out how to get my capture card to work on my 2DS. Dewey the Horse. Love it. Love Dewey the Horse. Still not a fan of Ab Moses' tail here. Not a fan. All right, we did it, Jaren. Whoa! There's a lot of people in this room. Well, how be? Speaking of Cowboy Life Simulator, here you go. Here's your cowboy. Hiding in a chilly old place like this. You guys take these Pokemon robbers. How are y'all's weekends? Are you looking forward to the work week? Is Monday intimidating to you? Or are you feeling good about it? Road to the Desert on Horse No Name was sung by Dewey Brunel. Oh, love it. Say I'm in the desert on a horse with no name. You guys ain't so bad. Yep, a promise is a promise. Come on and challenge my gym. Felt good to get out of the rain. Whatever, Team Plasma's ideal. Separating people and Pokemon is exactly the same as not having Pokemon in this world at all. That bunch is a waste of oxygen. Dang, Sharon. Okay, buddy. Check, it's cold, so I'm getting out of here. Cold like my heart. Towards other beings who don't even deserve to exist. Waste of my time. 
doing our best to make sure everyone has that song in their brain. It's a good song. Not a bad song to have stuck in your head. As they say, in the desert, you can't remember your name. Because there ain't no one for it to give you no name. That's what they say. That's what they say. Whoever they are, that's what they say. And why shouldn't we believe it? As far as I'm concerned, it must be the truth. They do say that. They're always saying it. They're called Dewey. Everybody said Dewey always says that. I always thought that song was sung by Don McLean. Or America or something. Is Dewey's real name? Or is Don McLean's real name Dewey? Or am I just m misrepresenting my 70s artist in my head? La 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 la. I need to buy some some healing items. Thank you. I could probably also use some great balls. I wonder how many I have. Got Oon. Go with nine. I haven't spent a dime so far. I deserve this. I deserve these items. Give them to me. Thank you. They do say it. Can't tell you how many times I've heard them. How many times I walk up to a person, they say, you know, in the desert, you can't remember your name. Do you know? I mean, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you because I don't have the Google machine in my hand actively right now. I just would have never said it. Is the singer for America? Well, there you go. Well, that adds up. So I was right in remembering that it was America. I've just never cared to look up the singer of America. Now you know. Well, that's very fun. Very, very fun. Pokemon is normally our Pokemon, Pokemon days. So if y'all like Pokemon, let me know. If you're not about Pokemon, then an interesting question of the day. Our latest nerdy sermon was on the anime Blue Lock, which is a soccer anime. And so our question of the day today over on our Discord is, what is your favorite fictional sports story? Your favorite fictional sports story. So it can be, it needs to be something that isn't, isn't real or wasn't true, a true story. So like Rudy, Rudy doesn't count. But it also can. If you want to say Rudy, I guess you could say Rudy. <laughs> but I would prefer like Angels in the Outfield or uh, something like that. Mine is a manga. Mine is a manga anime because I'm just a big old weeb. My answer is Whistle, which is another soccer manga. There's also Prince of Tennis. That was another really good. That was a, that was obviously a tennis manga. Slam Dunk was a really good manga. If you want recommendations for sports manga and anime, that's another thing to come to me for. I'll help you. I'll hook you up. I don't know what type Clay is. For some reason, just given his name, given Clay's name right, he gives me vibes that he's gonna be a ground type. I mean, his name is Clay, you know? Clay, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am Getsis of the Team Plasma. I've come to pick up my associates who are in your care. I don't need no thanks now. Your buddies were trying to steal some folks' Pokemon. What's this? It seems as if there's been a misunderstanding. We only free Pokemon from wicked people. Well, that sounds real nice if it's true. I may not talk pretty. Oh, man, the writing in this game, dude. <laughs> 10 out of 10, dude. Wow. But at least I'm an honest man. You talk real nice, but... What you're saying kind of sounds like lying. So tell me, Plain, what are you trying to say? Team Plasma also has an interest in Driftvale City. And we have many, many more members besides those who are here. Well, I can't tell if you're lying or not, but I reckon you've won this without a fight. Hm, fine. Take them and get. 
A decision worthy of a businessman called the Minor King. Change your name! Change your name, dude! <laughs> Clay! Clay, man! Clay! You do not, you do not want to be the Minor King, man. Change your name! Your grasp of the situation is outstanding. Well then, we'll be taking our colleagues off your hands. Get this, thank you very much. Don't worry, my fellow servant of the king. We are two of the seven sages, are we not? Well then, everyone, I expect that we will meet again somewhere. Sorry to let Team Plasma go after you tracked them down, fellas. Say, why don't we cheer ourselves up with a Pokemon battle? Don't keep me waiting. Okay. Well, we avoided a fight in the middle of the city anyway. Still, I can't help but think Getsus isn't just an ordinary person. I'm off to- What gave him away, dude? Are you kidding me? You don't think he's an ordinary person? Was it the- was it the green hair down to the back of his- or down to the, the bottom of his back? Or the monocle made of gold that looks evil and angry? What was it that gave him away, Jaren? I really don't want to lose that clay guy, so I'm gonna go stronger. I'm going to win my gym badge in a flawless victory. Probably the obvious villain name, yeah. Is it the intimidating sounding name? What type is he? I'm assuming ground type. Oh, thank you for the fresh water. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Ground type. I was right. Okay. Uh, I really don't have anything that's very good against ground type. Let's look up. Let's look it up. Let's Bulbapedia. Let's look up our type chart. All right. Water, grass, and ice. Okay, so vanilla ice could help us. Solid. No, I don't know if vanilla ice is near strong enough. I mean, he's level 24. That ain't nothing to shake a stick at. And we also have the Never Melt Ice. Does that make him stronger? I am stronger. I am better. Ooh! Bryce Cream, you might just sweet, buddy. Let's see if you got the heat. Hot ice. Alright, Felix, that was not who I was counting on you to send out first, buddy. Not who I was counting on. Probably should have looked up what any of my moves were. Okay, here goes nothing. Hopefully that does damage. Yikes! That ain't gonna do. Chuck! Chuck me boy me bob, I need your help. Reminder folks, we will be streaming tomorrow. We'll stream Sonic Frontiers from 1 to 4. And then we are going to be playing uh, no other games this week. My, uh, Wednesday morning we're gonna do our Nerdy Sermon Talkback on Blue Lock. And then I am off on Thursday for meetings all day. And then I'll be out of town on Friday. And we'll be back next Monday with some more Pokemon days. I would love to learn Body Slam. Let's see, Vital Throw is 70. Oh, wait, no joke. Set it, set it. Yeah, set it. Easy. Easy peasy. Drill burn. Now that sounds like somebody that Vanilla might be able to do a little more damage to. Let's see that sounds. Like. Though I still don't know which of these moves is the strongest. 
Avalanche sounds real strong. Please don't kill me. You did. You did it. You did it, Drillber. Good job. Is that what you want me to say? Did you want me to say I'm proud of you? Drillber. Come on, Drillber. R.I.P. Bryce Cream. He's coming back. Don't do dig. This is going to be a one-hit KO. Help. Oh, that's fine. That's not fine. So close. Are you kidding me? Look at how little health he has. They couldn't do me that one solid. Like a single pixel. Precisely. I lost! And I'm debating if I'm gonna go grind. Try and get my uh, Bryce Cream up some levels. That ain't gonna do if he's just dying every 10 seconds. Did I go in that top area? I don't honestly remember. By the way, folks, if it's been a while since you've been on stream, our stream avatars down at the bottom are now up to Gen 6. So if you like a Gen 6 Pokemon and you want to make that one your new stream avatar, you can. We don't charge any channel points or anything to do it. You can do them for free. Oh, yeah, I have. I've dropped all these people. So if you're so inclined, please enjoy a stream avatar on us. Rootin' tootin' rootin' tootin'. Well, this music is delightful. Ooh, Carablast. I don't know if Bryce Cream is very strong against you. Let's find out. Ice type is one of those type, types that I barely ever use. Good job, Bryce Cream. You go, Glen Coco. You go, Glen Coco. Bryce Cream, buddy, we're really going to need you. We're going to need you to be a little stronger. We need you to be a little bit more resilient. Ooh, nice. Well, I'll catch you then. Does anybody want to give a name to Carablast? I mean, if he's going to just make himself our prey... Let's get a name for this bad boy. Bad girl. It is a bug. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Carablast, the clamping Pokemon. Bug type. Height, 1 foot 8 inches. Weight, 13 pounds. When they feel threatened, they spit an acidic liquid to drive attackers away. This Pokemon targets Shelmet. Weird comment at the end there that it targets Shelmet. Mapmaker's wife, I would ping Zando. Zando, are you here? Zando would know. The Zelda? You got it.
Hey, if you say that's her name, I believe you. And that's a great vote. Aww, I love Deerling. Deerling's very cute. However, I have no health. Bryce, King, Bryce, Bryce Cream Buddy, we're going to have to do something about your weakling nature. I also just realized I haven't found many ghost types in this game. Like, not even one, I don't think. That's surprising. I know ghost types are normally slept on, but not that bad. To be on our fourth gym badge and still not see a ghost Pokemon is pretty great. Moses! You know, I'm gonna come up with a name for a deerling because I'm probably gonna catch it. We're just gonna let Kuro continue to carry the team on their back. <laughs> uh, just instantly thinking. Hmm. It's a boy. It's a boy, dearling. Deerling, the seasoned Pokemon. Normal, grass type. Height, 2 feet. Weight, 43 pounds. The turning of the seasons changes the color and scent of this Pokemon's fur. People use it to mark the seasons. It marks the seasons. We could always name it Weatherman. Although, is Weatherman too many words, too many letters? Is it too much to steal a villager name from Animal Crossing? Certainly not. I think that's very appropriate. Which dear villager are you thinking? I don't think it would. Would it? Oh yeah, it would, Weatherman. But if you want to do a villager, we'll do a villager. I'm down with either one. I'm down with Weatherman or I'm down with a villager. Matters not. You love Weatherman? Let's do it. Whoopsie. Ah, what in the world? Did I just get ahead of myself in my brain? Stop it. So I don't know how many of you know this, but I am on a, I'm on a, I'm on a trek to watch a thousand and one movies. Um, I do a lot of 1001 Journeys. It started with 1001 albums, and then it turned into 1001 movies, and it turned into 1001 books, and then it turned into 1001 games. And the only one I've really kept consistent with is books and, uh, and movies. And uh, I watched a movie last night called Safe with Julianne Moore. And that was wild. BRB, all good, Kira. That was a wild film. Very tense. Asia the girl coming in. What is up, Asia the girl with the raid? How we doing? Chats in the clap for Asia and the raid community. Thank you for being here. So appreciate you. What is good? How are we doing? What were y'all playing? Welcome in. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. I'm Nerd Pastor Nate here. We're on Twitch, Discord, and YouTube all the time doing all the things. We stream on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays every other Friday. Um, we are currently doing our regular Poke Monday stream. We stream every single Monday. And on Tuesdays, we do Variety Tuesday. We always play something a little bit different. Tomorrow, though, we are we normally we let you guys vote on what to play. Tomorrow, we're playing a predetermined game. We're going to be playing Sonic Frontiers because I'm very excited about it coming out. Wednesday, we do our Nerdy Sermon Talk Back, where we watch our Nerdy Sermon from the prior Sunday. This uh, week's was on Blue Lock, which is a new anime. If you haven't been watching, you should watch it. It's real good. If you like sports, if you like battle royales, then you'd like Blue Lock. It's very intense and fun. Uh, Thursday, I'm taking the day for meetings uh, with with my conference stuff. We are a real life church plant, and so uh, we are actually I'm, I am I am a ordained elder, provisional elder in the United Methodist Church, and so I am have I have United Methodist meetings on Thursday. So I've actually got to go to real big boy stuff instead of just playing games. Uh, but yeah, all the good stuff happens on Discord. We're there 24 seven. Thank you for the follow. Is that Dada? Maybe the 25th uh thank you for following appreciate you let's see asia how's it going i was making some emotes for a stream in our community rock on well that's super fun that is super fun i will be seeing asia maybe not asia but i'll be seeing uh, the moviga crew tomorrow um let's see we need to give it we need to give a shout out for sure dada rock on uh let's give a quick shout out to uh, Age of the girl. Does it have to be all lowercase or not lowercase? Can, does it have to be like exactly? Let's give a shout out to Age of the girl. And then let's also give a shout out to Moviga, which I think is just Moviga. Uh, I will be on their podcast tomorrow night. So if you watch them live, we'll be there uh, tomorrow. And Age of the girl. Just does all sorts of variety streams and fun stuff like designing emotes, uh, playing some video games and doing uh, some cooking streams and super cool stuff. So go support both those streams for sure. If you're not already following them, go follow them. Give them some love and support. We're grinding up Vanillite so we have a, a solid ice type to take on the ground type gem here because I never worked on a, a ice or on a water type. But yes, I, uh, I'm an avid Pokemon fan. I love Pokemon, but I skipped it. I skipped white, uh, black and white. I skipped black and white too, and I skipped X and Y. So I am now uh, playing them years later and finally getting through them. And I'm enjoying it so far. White supposedly has one of the best Pokemon stories, so I'm super excited to continue experiencing the story. You know, I don't have a grass type either. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have Deerling on my team. Sawsbuck is pretty cool. I definitely thought it was a normal type, though, and now I'm a little worried that Chuck might not be able to do enough damage. But yes, thank you for the raid. So appreciate it. So appreciate it. Ooh, look at them. Aren't they a grumpy guys? What's up, Swadloon? <laughs> Swadloon is me watching anime. Curled up. Curled up. All right, let's see. Let's, let's, who could whittle away at your health? I feel like that would one-shot you. Maybe not. You're both level 23, so maybe, maybe you'd survive. If anybody wants to name uh, Swadloon, I'll try and catch it. You guys are welcome to try and, try and, uh, Try and come up with a good name for it. We're actually just about to end stream. We're only a couple minutes left. We're on the tail end. We'll just keep the love going with one raid after the next. Y'all are our second raid of the day, and we so appreciate it. Gotta pay it forward and all that good stuff. Ooh, Swabloon's face just went wild. Swadloon kind of remains, kind of reminds me of Timmy from um, Undertale. No, okay, we won't be naming this one, folks. We will not be naming this one. All right. No, we'll continue to grind. Another Care Blast.
I don't know why I didn't do Abba Moses. Give it a little bit of an EXP boost. Really, if I can just bump it up one level, I'm, I'm pretty content with that. I just want one, one more. Oopsie, wrong one. No, not wrong one. My fool, I've been doing Ember this whole time. I thought Flame Charge was like Electric Charge and it just built up his energy. Man, I've been doing the wrong thing this whole time. It's very embarrassing. No Swad Loon? I want another Swad Loon! I love it so much! I need it in my life! I need to write down to send uh, send the Ludo, Ludo good stuff your way through. Oh, I keep forgetting. Like midstream, it keeps slipping my brain, but I, I can't forget it. It'd be great to have you on the team. <laughs> Another one. Dearling is so cute. What are you forgetting? Sorry, I was distracted. To remind you about Ludo Good, I need to send you the links. <laughs> Wrong one again. Nathy Poo. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Yes, please want me to send you a DM on Discord. I can remember. I can remember. Surely it's only four minutes. Hey, any favorite Pokemon of Gen 5 yet? I really like Deerling. I really like Deerling. The one that I'm about to I'm about to destroy. Um I'm enjoying Throw on my team. <laughs> I don't know if he's like a favorite, but he's a solid entry into a team. Let's see. Any other standouts? I guess not. Who's on my squad? Who's on my squad? My squad right now is... I just got a Vanillite. Swoobat. Pignite. What does he evolve into? I'm trying to remember the name of it. Dwebble. I can't remember his name though. The first time I had for Deerling was Venison. <laughs> hey, look, I dig it. My first Pokemon game was Pokemon Black. See, my first was the original. I was a, I was an OG Pokemoner. I played Pokemon Blue on my Game Boy, and that was my favorite. Crustal, Crustal, I knew it. Look at your moves. Nope, nope. Want to look at your moves? Yeah. Fifty-five, nothing. Sixty. Okay. My first was Platinum. All good games. I love all of them. I've just never taken the time to go through Black and White, Black and White 2, and X and Y. And I felt like the best way to keep me honest and to make sure that I actually played them through was on stream. But I already know what's going to happen. Scarlet and Violet are going to come out, and then I'm going to get distracted, and then I'm going to forget where I am, and then I'm going to stop playing. So I don't know how we're going to make it happen. I foolishly thought that I could I could finish um, Pokemon White before Scarlet and Violet came out, but that was silly of me because we are literally on our fourth badge. I thought I could finish, and we're on our fourth badge. Embarrassing. All right, we have saved, and we are in a good spot, and we're going to go find somebody to raid. Folks, as I mentioned earlier, we are Checkpoint Church, Church for Nerds, Geeks, and gamers, we are happy that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with us and being a part uh, of this stream, this Poke Monday stream. Uh, we are planning on having a short week. Remember, just Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we'll be here tomorrow with some uh, Sonic Frontiers, and then we'll be here Wednesday with our nerdy sermon talkback. We'll talk about our sermon on the anime 
Blue Lock. Uh, just got here, Will. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. One to four. One to four always EST on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. And then nine to ten on Wednesdays. Seven to ten every other Wednesday. And then Thursdays, nine to twelve in the morning. East, you know, all Eastern time. And then Fridays, sometimes we stream our podcast. Um, we did have our huge Checkathon stream. Another huge thank you to everybody that was a part of our Checkathon stream and who donated towards Movember. Um, we raised, we beat our goal of $500 and raised $529 for the wonderful folks um, of Movember supporting uh, prostate cancer and testicular cancer research, supporting men's mental health and physical health. Uh, and we appreciate all of those things so much. But now it is time for us to find somebody to raid. Folks, for those of you that do not know, we are a real life church. I'm a real life pastor, and we are doing a real life church thing here um, most days of the week and every single day of the week over on our Discord channel. Exclamation point Discord in the chat if you want to learn any more about any of that stuff. Um, but because of that, we are here to just love on all the nerds, geeks, and gamers out there on Twitch and beyond. And we want to let you know that no matter who you are or what you believe or where you've been, uh, whether you believe in God, don't believe in God, go to church, don't go to church, hate the church, no matter what you believe or where you may fall on that spectrum, we believe three things to be true about every single one of you out there. No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, we believe these three things to be true. Number one, we believe that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here uh, on Twitch and Discord and YouTube. And number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, I am looking for who to raid. Does anybody have anybody on their feeds? I've got several, and I've got almost too many to choose from. What's up, Perry? We're just signing off. Just came back. Bye. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just on, just leaving. Uh, it's been a while since we've raided Bonsai Baby or Jake. We could always raid Jake. D. Greg's TV. D. Greg's is live. I thought I followed D. Greg's. We've never raided D. Greg's. Oh, if he's live, we need to raid him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Do I not follow him at a checkpoint? I definitely follow him in Pastor Nate. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's raid D. Greg's live. That's a great, that's a great idea. Great idea. He always posts over in our Discord channel, so we, should, we, ought, to, we ought to show some support and love. Folks, like I said, God loves you. We love you. You matter. So we want to pass that on and spam some you matters in D. Greg's chat. So you should see one of our free emotes is the you matter. I'll spam a bunch right now. Go spam some you matters over in their chat. Let them know that they are loved and that they do matter. And that the work they are doing is important and needed and valid. Uh, and we cherish it. So with that, folks, until the next time I see you, which will hopefully be right now in the Discord. But if not, I will see you tomorrow for some Sonic Frontiers at 1 o'clock. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye!